어? 어? 저기! 나게 빛의 샷플레이! 아니 갑자기 젠지 매드부비 한번 찍었는데요? 와 지금 젠지의 마지막 한타는 진짜 그림 같았어요 말 그대로 그러니까요 하나생명 데뷔기 이전 아주 제대로 따랐네요 하나생명 이스포츠가 다음 라운드 진출을 완정되었습니다 와 하나생명 이러면 전부 대승인데 슈퍼솔저 왜 저래요 악마킹 게 진짜 영대인데 황사장 간다 빅게임이다 빅게임이죠 빅게임의 하나생명K 2023 Summer Playoffs. We are here for our second match of round two. We got Gen Z up against Hama Life Esports. And yesterday we had a big upset with T1 overcoming KT Rolster in five games. But today, what's on the cards? I don't really know. I'm Valdez with me is Ox. What do you think, Ox? Well, you know, I thought that KT would be T1, so yeah. Does my opinion count for anything? Well, does anybody's <laughs> opinion count? I guess, <laughs> I, I guess not, but I think always proven that upsets can happen. The expectation, I think, today is that Gen G will win, obviously, you know, highest seeded, but also played Honor Life Esports in week nine and won pretty handily. I think the game one, yeah. Honor Life Esports contested a lot more, kind of fell apart a bit in game two, but again, who really knows when it comes down to these playoff series? Yeah, it's hard to tell, I mean, how the different teams are going to react to the extra pressure. Definitely a little bit more of our eyes on that note on Humble Life Esports with Grizzly in the jungle, but we'll talk a bit more about that later. As you guys can see, T1 did get the upset yesterday, and Humble Life Esports, they did overcome DRX in the first round. 3-0 uh, to get to this spot to go up against Gen G. KT, importantly, did choose T1 after round one. Unfortunate choice, I suppose. Uh, looking back, high side is 2020. Yeah, and I think the thing is, like, Honor Life Esports, we saw them get a 3-0 against DRX. Game one and two, pretty convincing. Game three, a little bit messy, but it's it's hard to take too much away from that. DRX were obviously the weakest team coming into the playoffs, but also looked worse in that series than they did towards the end of the split. So I don't know how much weight that really holds. And Gen.G, they lost their final series to Bro. So um, <laughs> it's been a while. It's yeah. been a while since Honor Life Esports has managed to beat Gen.G. And I think this is kind of showing how they have been when it comes to regular se uh, season matchups. They tend to beat the teams below them in the standings, not so much the teams above them. Yeah, especially Genji, I think they have been very consistent over the course of many years and have oftentimes been at least in the top three, oftentimes top two. So uh, generally a team that Hummel Life Esports would struggle against. As you see, the last time they even won a series, which was 2-1, was in 2021 spring. So over two years ago, as Hummel Life Esports, for some reason, they have earned this big game hunter tag, which doesn't make any sense because they only uh, win against the bottom teams. As this jungle matchup is going to be very interesting because Peanut's been around basically forever, whereas Grizzly, he has had a great debut, but he hasn't been around for very long. And importantly, that first week that he played, he actually played against D-plus and Gen G, Peanut and Canyon, and that week one was rough. You know, people having doubts about Grizzly, he kind of got blasted a bit in the jungle, understandably, playing against two of the most uh, accomplished junglers in the league. But he's managed to really build up, and people have a lot of faith in him with how he's with how he has played in the split. But that week nine matchup into Gen G once again, he had shown the veteran experience and kind of dominating the matchup. Clash of the Super Soldiers. Both of these mid laners do have very similar champion pools in terms of what they have uh, prioritized in the mid lane and. 
I think that, uh, you know, we've seen a lot more Yone from Zeka, whereas Chovy has played a, a more eclectic variety of different things. So it uh, will be interesting to see what the pick ban looks like in this matchup. You know, we see some team stats there. Genji leading in quite a few. Uh, pretty active in the early game, and I think very good at getting an advantage and then snowballing that and just not really giving the team a real chance to make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of making it happen, nobody made it happen yesterday, but let's see if anyone can get it right this time around. As we do have a couple of Homolife Esports voters oh, maybe gosh. trying to build off of what happened yesterday, but the global side is very united in either 3-0 or 3-1. But I will say this is, this is better than yesterday because, I mean, that many predictions for KT and a unanimous prediction was always going to go wrong. Um, at least we have a couple of people on the other side, so it's not going to feel as bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just a couple of people so that maybe Gen G can actually follow, you know, the the, the script, <laughs> as it were. Uh, the fan prediction here, um, no T1 in the series, and Gen G also a very large fan base, and it just makes sense. Gen G are the favorites in this one, so 70 to 30 split when it does come to the fan prediction on the global side. You can see they're right in the back the three different uh, Korean communities as well. About the same. Very heavily towards the Gen G side. But guys, we do have a coach interview with both coaches. Let's jump into that right now. 네, 안녕하세요. Gen G 스포츠 팀의 감독을 맡고 있는 스코 고동빈입니다. 제 예상에는 이제 T1이 올라왔을 때 T1이랑 맞붙을 수 있겠다고 생각했는데 좀 하, 하나랑 좀 대결하게 돼서 의외였고 누가 올라오든 좀 자신감이 있었어서 네, 자신감이 있는 상태입니다. 음, 정규 시즌을 마지막에 패했긴 하지만 저희가 뭐 시즌 초에 생각했던 것보다 훨씬 정규 시즌 성적이 좋았다고 생각해서 그런 거는 좀덜 신경 쓰면서 네, 저희의 정규 시즌 좀 좋았던 점좀더 많이 상기시켰습니다. 어, 오늘 경기의 승부처는 저는 정글이 될것 같은데 상대의 정글러 선수가 아무래도 좀 신인이다 보니까 조금 큰 무대에서 떨수 있다고 생각해서 네, 그 부분을 히너 선수가 잘 하면은 네. 쉽게 이길 수 있을 거라고 생각합니다. 예상 스코어는 상대편 경기 플레이오프 첫 번째 경기를 봤는데 3대 0으로 좀 무난하게 올라왔지만 과정에서 결코 쉽지 않았다고 생각해서 저희가 오늘 그 기세를 꺾어서 1 경기만 이긴다면 3대 0으로 이길 수 있다고 생각합니다. 저희 선수들이 제가 1년, 2년 동안 지켜봐로 인하면은 플레이오프 때 훨씬 더 퍼포먼스를 잘 내는 선수들이라 생각해서. 어, 걱정 없이 오늘 잘하면 충분히 3대0 승리 예상하고 있습니다. 젠지 파이팅! 안녕하세요. 하나생명 e스포츠 감독 댄지 최인규입니다. 스프링 시즌에 이어서 썸머 시즌에도 플레이오프 2라운드에 진출하게 되어 너무 기쁘고 스프링 시즌보다 더 좋은 성적을 낼수 있도록 열심히 하겠습니다. 어, 딱히 신경을 안 쓰고 있고 스프링 때도 저희가 DK 상대로 상대 전적이 많이 불리하고 있었는데 끊어냈듯이 그런 안 좋은 기록들을 끊어낼 수 있는 기회라고 생각하고 있습니다. 어, 항상 저는 이제 정글 미드 쪽이 중요하다고 생각을 해서 그쪽에서 유리함을 가져오는 팀이 게임을 가져오지 않을까 싶습니다. 예상 스코어는 3대1 정도 예상하고 있습니다. 스프링 시즌에 만족하지 못한 성적을 거둔 만큼 썸머 시즌에 더 열심히 준비했기 때문에 네, 꼭 좋은 경기력으로 보답해드리도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. 하나생명 이스포츠 화이팅! Well, as you can see, both Coach is quite confident in their teams to make it happen, but uh, definitely on paper, Hamalei Esports the big dark horse out of the four teams we have left, especially after T1's performance yesterday. Yeah, I think it was interesting that Score said he felt that they expected to be against T1 when they didn't get the second seed, so maybe a bit of premonition about how he thought T1 were a scary opponent, but uh, yeah, I think yeah. he's happy with the matchup they got and pretty, pretty good read on Grizzly and she being play the target. Yeah. Here is Doran on the top side of the Gen G lineup, getting the high fives from all the fans and also the cheers. Was in the all LCK second team, as were a lot of the Gen G members. Um, very much kind of, you know, of just lining up. Yeah. Um, the We're way that it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily the way that we voted for the all pro, but it is what it is. Yeah, I think Doran has really stepped up this split and been more of a carry for the team, but playoffs is always where that gets tested. Yes, you're absolutely right. And here is Kingen 
also getting the cheers, as will everybody. Kingen definitely has been known as kind of the rock in the top lane, even when he's not playing uh, tanks. Definitely just a very consistent player, but oftentimes doesn't have the very high highs that some other top laners have, but uh, certainly can do it, even if it's not too often. And Aatrox in the meta, the dude with the world skin, you know, all yeah, there's been no Aatrox and his skin's gone a bit wasted. And then finally, just in time, yeah, they, they buff it crazily. Coincidence? <laughs> Here's Peanut, the guy who uh, is basically now a dinosaur in the league, I suppose just behind guys like Faker and Death. But yeah, Peanut has been around for a very long time and is the big veteran in the jungle matchup today. He is making sure to get every single fan's hand. And uh, we all voted for him as the first jungler, actually. Uh, definitely feeling his presence in the Gen G side. Yeah, and you know, Peanut has obviously been fantastic for a long time, but there's been a lot of like Peanut moments where he's like made a misplay. We haven't seen that this split. He's been very consistent and might be a rough time for Grizzly who, with his first playoffs in the LCK. Obviously a good start against DRX, but this is a big test for him. Yeah, as he lumbers down, um, White Boris himself is going to have a big challenge ahead of him today, but certainly he has the tools within himself to get it done. We know he's a very talented player, again, a lot of questions just remain about his mentality. Can he stay solid in the face of all of the pressure? Yeah, and Chovy, obviously the, I'd say one of the big names on Gen.G is safe to say, and I think him against Zeka should be a super exciting matchup. Um, Zeka has really been on form recently. A lot of similar champions in the pool. Zeka has his Yone to challenge Chovy as Azir. And I expect a battle in the mid lane because mid often influences the jungle quite heavily. So I think Grizzly might sink or swim based on this matchup. Mm -hmm. Zeka really stepping it up here in summer uh, as we get closer to world as his team was able to do last year uh, with DRX. And yeah, I, I think this player does have the tools to actually match Chovy in the mid lane, especially in this current state. Not saying that he's a better player or that he's even on the same plane, but I, I think he's got it in him and we'll have to wait and see if he does show up today. Yeah, I think a high variance player is how I'd describe him, capable of huge peaks at his best. And on the other side, I'd say Pays is the opposite, where he is very consistent, super consistent. He has been since his introduction to the LCK, which is surprising for a rookie player. Obviously run, won the Rookie of the Year uh, award to no surprise, and was a big reason why they were so good in spring and continue to be so. Yeah, this guy, uh, <laughs> Grizzly was like, maybe I can get, and then Pays just smacked him down. Uh, yeah, not a big surprise, as Pays is insane, but... Viper also insane in his own right. And I, I think that Viper, um, he was oftentimes the main carry of this team, especially when they were struggling. Now that everybody's kind of on the same page, he is also doing a great job. Yeah, and I think that's how, with the meta how it is, is the ideal, is that you have carries in the top of mid who shoulder some of the weight, but AD carry is still super important as it permanently has been uh, in pro play for what seems like forever. Hmm. Um, broken rule, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think Delight's been honestly phenomenal this summer split. You know, uh, Lahens obviously won MVP, but a lot of their all pro votes went to Delight over him. Um, and I think, particularly on picks like Rakan, really benefiting from the return of the engagement, I think has suited him massively. Yeah, I mean, Ruler. Um was fantastic in his own right down there, but I think that Pease and Delight have done a really good job of, of carrying the mantle in terms of consistency as his opponents. Life now here on Hamalife Esports and has been very uh, serviceable alongside a Viper. Hasn't been super flashy, but definitely gets the job done. Yeah, and I think he's looked better since the introduction of Grizzly. It feels like the strength in the jungle, jungle support, often really important, obviously, uh, has allowed him to flourish more and and look better. Still, 
I would, I would say there's moments where we see him make some misplays, but generally speaking, look a lot better. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, guys, the Genji creator on Dehyun, who is a KBO cheerleader, which is the Korean baseball organization, uh, was doing the, the cheers for the side of Genji. Whereas, once again, on the side of Home Life Esports, it is Kesman, the former head coach and uh, still within the organization. And just cheering on his team, doing a great job, hoping for the big win tonight. Yeah, I mean, when he cheered for Viper, there was a lot, there was a lot going on in that one, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> key players, and I think makes complete sense. I think the mid matchup will have so much impact on the jungle matchup. Grizzly needs to survive, and as a result, he needs Zeka to be in good form. Uh, I think Zeka has looked fantastic on his picks. Whether they'll target those picks, target the champion pool, is the question, because Chovy. You know, we've definitely had a couple of games where maybe Chovy hasn't had the most impact, but generally speaking, he's been super active, pairing up with Peanut, and just been taking names. Yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty deadly on that side. We saw a big difference in the champion pool was that Chovy has played nine games of Annie, whereas Zekka's only played six and has a much worse, I mean, he's at 50-50 for Annie as Zekka, but uh, Chovy with eight and one. Genji doing a lot of winning. And definitely prioritizing that pick a lot more compared to his opposition. I think earlier in the split was when we saw a lot of the Annie. Um, and I think Hunt Life Esports looked better when they started to bring out the Yone and lean him on that and play to his strengths. I think what would work for Genji here is to trim it down, target some of those picks that he's really excelled on, and then force him back onto things, you know, like maybe like the Ari, the Annie, the sort of more traditional mid laners. And I think Chovy would have the edge in that situation. Yeah. It definitely could be a look as we do have, uh, I hope Grizzly's all right. He's got the uh, bandaged up hand once again, just trying to keep everything intact, I suppose. And yeah, I mean, this is going to be a very interesting matchup because after yesterday, I I'm not really sure what to expect, right? I think everybody feels kind of thrown into this chaos after T1 did take the victory in five games against KT. A lot of people are saying, well, Genji maybe a bit more consistent, you know, I don't really think Hamalife Esports is going to be able to uh, topple them this time around. They're not quite the team. They don't have that momentum with, you know, Faker coming back in the lineup yeah. on the side of T1. But I also wouldn't underestimate this team. Yeah, I think people kind of thought that T1 like this big wildcard dark horse. We don't know what to expect. And KT being KT, the more excited you are about them, the more likely to flounder. I think people expect it to be more straightforward despite that, but again, you never really know with these things. Um, expectation is definitely Gen G should have the edge, but I think the first game will really be telling to see what sort of form they're in. <laughs> and even if. It's like game one yesterday, right? Yeah. <laughs> but even then, like, even though KT won that game one, I think T1 showed they, con they could contest in top and in bot lane. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the thing. Honor Life Esports don't need to win game one, they just need to show that they can contest. Gen G would not be the main takeaway. Uh, Open up with the Rail Bands. Like there's been so many broken things to get a hand on in terms of bands that a lot are going to be left open. We'll see if they start to prioritize a prioritization for Gen G towards Zekka's champion pool. Maybe the Yone could be targeted, but starting off with that Renekton, Kaisa still available and open. So Kingen is 13 and 0 on Renekton. Um, his next most played is Jax at five games, one and four. So pretty good. Um, Bit of a Renekton one trick. Definitely a comfort for him, and makes a lot of sense that they banned it away. See what Genji go for with their third ban in this situation. Going to target the little Blanc. Still seeing a lot of bans towards it, even though it did feel like it kind of fell off towards the end of the season. And Honor Life Esports, will they ban the Kais in this situation? Will Genji first pick it in return? Sejuani still open and available. Obviously, Honor Life Esports might give up the Kais if they want to go like Sejuani Jax. Uh, to give some strength to King and could also go Sejuani, Jax, and Yone, but they actually banned the Jax themselves. Yeah. Surprisingly enough. So King is 13 and 0 on Renekton. Doran is 12 and 0 on Jax. So it's like, well, if you're going to hit our top laner, we're also going to hit your top laner. Yeah, that's valid. Maybe they were worried about a Sejuani first pick and, and the pairing up with that. We're going to see a Maokai come out from Gen G. So. Jace is the expectation. We've seen Jace Maokai super often so far. Uh, and I think Honor Life Esports should expect that to a degree. They could just go the Sejuani in response, but with the Jax and the Renekton gone, it's a little bit 
low up prior, but given that Zeka likes to bring out the Yone, you could go maybe like Sejuani Kaisa here, and then on three you could pick potentially lean into the, the Yone or something like that. We'll see what they opt to go for in this situation. They do block with the Kaisa, which I think is the right call. Uh, and we'll see if they opt to go for a jungler, and it is going to be that Sejuani Kaisa. So options here. Uh, they go mid or potentially top on that three, but obviously not both. And Genji are going to go Aatrox, and then probably Jace here, I would think. They're actually going for the Azir instead, so still obviously a great pick for uh, Chovy, but it means you're instantly going to get uh, responded to with the uh, with the Yone. Obviously a great pick into the Azir, and kind of expected that pairing with the Sejuani and the Yone. Yeah, you saw Chovy's face, he's like, yeah, I mean, this is they expected this it. is what he's going to play at like 100% of the time. He yeah. has Sejuani, he's up against Azir, like well, if, what else is he going to play? If you were surprised by this, then you, <laughs> you didn't do your preps. I think <laughs> Genji certainly expected yeah. that to happen. Uh, huge win rate on the pick, but obviously that's because Zekka's just been doing so well on it. And now Genji starting to target the top laners in this situation. Hanwai e Esports looking towards the bot lane. Zyagon and the Zeri gone. A massive pick for Pays when he's been able to get his hands on it. Yeah. Uh, and the Nautilus ban actually coming out, so not wanting to deal with the Kaiser Nautilus. Obviously, Hanwai e Esports do have that five pick, so expect to put support there especially with the Nautilus ban. So a top laner for King in this situation, they could just go for the Xante as an option. Um, or in the, with the idea of an Orn, obviously would give them a super strong front line and a solid engage option. Yeah, it's got a decent lane into Aatrox. It doesn't really shut him down in a way. Um, so Aatrox kind of does get this lane where he just gets to scale up. But uh, certainly very reliable engage. You can set up the Yone. You have such a huge front line with Orin Sejuani. You've got decent scaling within it. I think it's a good pick. It's obviously a good one for Kingen as well. Yeah, for sure. And I do kind of wonder what Genji is going to go for the bot lane because there is so much dive threat on Home Life Esports. Zaya would have been the amazing pick, but it's obviously been taken away. I do think the Alistair is great. Very good at providing disengage, knocking away threats to provide space. But the AD carry is going to be, I'd say, the trickier one because Trying to find an option that's going to survive in this situation against all this dive when Zaya is banned. A lot of the, the mobile picks are taking off the cards. It's going to be tricky. We've seen you know, things like Varus played quite a bit, but it could end up being a liability. Sivir, you know, has started to make a resurgence and makes sense to spell shield. A lot of value here, although still quite short range and can get jumped on. Yeah, it doesn't really have an innate escape like a, a Zaya Featherstorm or obviously Kai'Sa. Rakan left open through all of this, so Life says, well, I guess I'll just take that and really just adds in another layer to their insane engage. Uh, very reliable engage as well on the side of Hobble Life Esports. So fits in perfectly. Rakan's a great pick nowadays. I think they kind of killed it with this draft. Yeah, and I think it, it's very clear that, you know, Braum could have made sense into the Alistair and to pair it with Sejuani, but not in terms of what the comp wants. It's very clear the Hunter Life Esports are all in on the dive, on the aggression, and these are the comps where I think they've looked best. Since their resurgence in summer, it's been playing aggressive team fight comps like this, whereas the other side, Gen G, is a much more defensive composition. A lot of peel tools, two backline hyper carries who are just going to want to sit back and be safe. And Aatrox. And Aatrox, who, honestly, if you're diving into Aatrox, so much value on the Qs being able to do a ton of damage. So, two opposing compositions with opposing win conditions and how they want to play out team fights. A big factor though is going to be how that laning phase goes. And I will say, I feel like overall, the edge goes to Gen G. you know, with the Azir's going to have that priority. You're going to have the Sivir as well, able to shove in waves after a point. So might be a bit of weather in the storm at first for the side of Hanwha Life Esports, unless I can get some good ganks off. Jeez. Oh my, that is sick. <laughs> That's a great drawing. Uh, must be Grizzly. I don't know who else it could be. In that this did look one. like a very Grizzly bear. I will say that. Yeah. Well, this is a, a very interesting way to kick off the first game. It, it does feel like with all the target bands, both teams got a bunch of tools that they would really love. Jovi back on the Azir. You've got the Aatrox for Doran this time around. And let's see how it is going to go here as uh, I'm very curious about this mid lane matchup as well, especially with Zeka having the Sejuani in his back pocket. But guys, it looks like we're just about ready to go. Let's top of the rip for game number one of this best of five.
And, you know, I feel like a lot of times you see these drafts or like, you know, this draft is better or, you know, this team got what they want and the other team didn't. I feel like this is an example where both teams probably came out of this really happy and with exactly what they wanted in this situation. And it's really going to come down to execution and how they leverage that. Many I think a big thing this. for Hunter Life Esports is obviously the expectation is Orn is going to have a... He's going to be fine, but not going to be super aggressive in the top lane matchup. I think the main thing is his mid-jungle. You know, despite the fact that obviously Azir has a lot of pressure in the 1v1, the 2v2 you can really find an edge. And if Peanut ends up getting caught into a fight, the easily stacking passive from the Sejuani could be devastating. So I think trying to challenge there is important. And already Hunter Life Esports get a ward down for some information on where Peanut is starting off. Yeah, uh, great information over there. Uh, there was a ward put on the Raptors by Gen G over on the side of Helm of Life, but Grizzly not exactly showing there just yet. They did ping it, so probably somebody got seen there, and depending on the timing, could have a sense that Grizzly is going to start up on the top side. But, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. As uh, Chovy's Yone has been insane uh, over the two times we've seen it so far. I'm really surprised that they don't give him this champ more often, but obviously in this draft, uh, wasn't really the angle. The Yone Maokai, not exactly the duo you're looking for, and obviously made a lot more sense for Zeka. But you can see Chovy very comfortable on his Azir as well, 6 and 0 so far. Yeah, and I think as well the Maokai for Peanut in a lot of the recent games really able to make early ganks happen. And into a composition like this where you have two super mobile picks with the uh, Yone and the Kaiser having the front and click CC so valuable. We do see Viper not going cleanse this game. And being honest, there isn't a ton of cleanse value, but it's often uh, some teams just take it as a default into Maokai. Cause it's very hard not to at some point get flash ruined. So you definitely keep an eye on that. It does mean if Peanut ends up moving towards the bot lane, there is an easy angle to go for a, not just like bidding sums, but you probably get a kill if you land that route. Yeah, it's a really good point. We'll have to wait and see. He pays himself even with the spell shield, does have cleanse, and there's a lot more cleansable stuff on uh, on the opposite side, uh, obviously. So makes more sense there. As we did see, the Yone win rate has been very good into the Azir so far this season. Nine That's against why. four. And yeah, I mean, once you get to level three, level four, you start unbounding soul, and even Azir can't really match uh, the amount of poke that the Yone can do. Yeah, I think obviously early levels, Shovi has the big advantage on the Azir, but there, if you manage to find the tornado with your unbound soul, it's devastating. And then at level six, the matchup gets. A bit hectic because obviously Yone can find the Azir, but we often see what happens is an overstep from the Yone into a uh, Empress Divide on the tower. Has happened quite a few times in the LCK and more vision put down in uh, the jungle here by Hanoi Life Esports and they're being very active in not only stealing away these Raptors, but tracking where Peanut's going to be and Grizzly should just be able to smite this. Uh, the contest yeah. with the little ones, but Zeka's still in the area. Mm, yeah, they they have priority in bot, which is another reason why they, you know, bot lane's not just going to randomly come up. So this is pretty much a, a clean 2v2. And Peanut, you know, with Azir busy, he kind of just has to run away from Grizzly. So Grizzly going to push him out. I don't think it's going to amount to too much at the end of the day. Like, Peanut didn't go for a back, neither did Grizzly. And Peanut's just going to start up his Krugs and have his Raptors taken away. And the timing's so good, because we look mid, there's a pretty heavy stack well, the wave is going to stack up in return towards Zekka, so the timing was great when they had that prio, and now we can get a reset from Grizzly, and Zekka can just let the wave push into him if he needs. But it looks like he's playing it aggressive still. Yep, just looking for that uh, opportunity as a flash potentially here from Delight, looking for it onto Viper. But the knockup from Life was huge, going to keep him safe for now. Viper is just going to walk this one off, just using his heal and Delight down a flash. A little bit telegraphed, I think, was the problem. You know, you saw Delight walking forwards and trying to flash for the knockup as well ends up backfiring because of Life's peel in that situation. So flash down from Alistair for nothing in return. Life starting this one off so well. Yeah. Atlas, uh, he is on the desk today, and he will say that, uh, you know, the Hex Flash actually just better, but, uh, yeah. Definitely uh, like to get a kill as well yeah. for the regular Flash. You know, if um, you're going to use it, don't just use it to trade for heal. Yeah, I think if he'd just gone for the regular combo, then he probably would have burned summons from Viper. Because he went for the Flash Q into Headbutt back, that allowed life to interrupt. 
and, and let it backfire. Yeah. As there's Amber's Divide, gonna try to get him before the soul goes back. Zeka did take a turret shot as well, so nice little try. Zeka will hold on to his ultimate though, as Jovi's down his. Yeah, Jovi got very aggressive there, but I mean, that's the power up that Yone is. You're very non committal uh, with your E. And Light's just gonna try and help Zeka get the wave pushed in so he can go for a reset. Very low on HP in this situation, and. I don't think you can go for Dragon here with how yeah. low Zeka is. I think this is really Gen G's to take if they want it. And Grizzly's making a stand here. There is this plant for Zeka as the light is going to knock up both of them here. The follow up not really in position, but look at Zeka. He's just so low. He can't really get in this fight. They are going to poke pace down just a little bit. And Zeka still has his ultimate, which is why he's sticking around. But Hamalife Esports doesn't really look like they want to engage on this 4v4. So they'll just back out through the bottom lane. Yeah, even with the plant, I think that was risky. I think maybe the game plan was get the plant, go on Dragon, Life can cue the Dragon to heal Zekka up, and they wanted to play it slow to get his health back, but Genji make a great call just to challenge immediately uh, and end up getting that advantage. In the top lane, we haven't looked here too much, but Doran has a pretty significant CS advantage over Kingen, and now proxying waves just yeah. trying to, he knows the focus is on the bottom side of the map, so he can just kind of do what he wants. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no jungler um, getting into the mix there as Genji is going to take that one down. You see how Life Esports kind of moving a bit, but not really committing to this just yet as there was a wave under Zekka, and now Pays is going to get stunned up just a bit. There's the Permafrost, but they get Grizzly into a bad spot. The Yone ultimate is pretty huge, but the damage not quite there. Zekka looking for the kill on a Pays. He will get it. Follow up here on the delight is big, oh. and a double kill for Zekka now as he's just going to back away from the fight. Zeka just completely solo carrying that fight. Honestly, initially looked okay for Gen G, but the flanking Yone comes in, and Gen G have to pay for that dragon. Still only a one kill edge for Hanalife Life Esports, but Zeka with two kills in his pocket on this pick definitely looks scary. Yeah, and we see, you know, they're trying to get out and they're trapped against this wall. Pays early spell shield, manages to avoid pretty much everything, but Zeka coming in with a flash Q into ult. And to be honest, I think maybe if Pays had just gone in with the intention of I'm going to flash over the wall immediately, they might have been able to get out easier. But you could see they were looking for the fight. They were like, we can still handle this. And it ends up backfiring there. So maybe a bit overconfident from the side of Gen G. Yeah, now take a look at this. They're going to go for a lane swap with the Rift Herald available. How about few Sports want to make a play for the top side objective? And you know, I'm not necessarily sure that this is better for the side of Hunter Life Esports because Civic can just wave clear bot comfortably. Kingen doesn't have TP and Duran is stronger than an AD carry right now. So, you know, the 4v4, like I like the concept of Hunter Life Esports, but the 4v4, I think Gen G might actually be okay with, uh, especially with Zeka without flash as well. So you can't go for one of those big flash plays again. We'll see. For right now, it just seems like neither team really making anything happen off it, just a little bit of a contest of vision and mm -hmm. some recalls coming in. And Kingen doesn't care about the Civet. <laughs> yeah, you saw Pace was like angling up uh, through his jungle, maybe trying to join in a potential fight for the Rift Herald. And now he's going up there once again. So let's see. I mean, Genji going to start this one up. We do see a Void Seeker coming through. Kingen still no teleport like you mentioned. So yeah, I mean, Orn might be able to get a plate. But at the end of the day, in the 4v4, Genji should be able to hold this angle. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I think the 4v4 with the Aatrox rather than the Sivir is better. And we saw Pays moving up to potentially cover mid in case they were going to try and pressure mid tower instead. And as a result, King gets a plate. But all in all, Genji happy with the play. They take the Herald in the situation, and they don't really lose hope. Trying to make a play under the turret here. We got three people, and Jovi just no way to get out as he did have flash, but didn't quite expect to be focused down that quickly. Yep, Engage comes in, CC laid really well, and this is the thing with having so many sources of Engage, so much follow-up, even the Empress Divide just isn't enough to get you space, and Zeka 3-0 on his Yone. Hmm. Starting to get worrying. I feel yeah. like a lot of fans will be thinking, could they have just banned this pick, you know? They would... They went for the Azir knowing the Yone would come. Yeah. Confident in the matchup. Well, well Onx, I, I gotta tell you, they had to ban LeBlanc. Ah, yes, true. Yep. Zeka, notorious LeBlanc player. Very important. Um, had to get rid of that one. You know, when I think Zeka, I think LeBlanc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe for game two, they might make some change-ups, even if Genji do win this one, as 
Let's see the follow-up here. I mean, Toby's just like, yeah, I should be fine. It wasn't. A yeah, great setup. Also, Life getting the W not interrupted uh, by the Empress Divide. A little bit late, unfortunately, from Chovy, and Zeka doing a great job of being the uh, vessel for Life to get in with that engage. Yep, definitely a uh, really good job. I like that how like eSports, they, they pick a comp like this, and they're not scared to get their hands dirty, right? They didn't go in on the fight where they felt like they couldn't win, but on the Dragon fight and on this dive here in mid, it was like a full committal. Everybody's on the same page. They're going in, and even for the top fight, which... Uh, for the Rift Herald, which it seemed like they were setting up for, they just decided, okay, well, we're not going to win this one, so let's just back away. Yeah, I think it's showing really smart decision on when they should go for a fight and when they have an advantage, but also they've made Genji pay every time they've looked for something. You know, they got the Dragon, cost them a couple of kills. They got the Herald, they picked Chovy, and they're just trying to make sure that nothing is given over for free. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's definitely good play so far. And uh, Hummel IP Sports keeping this interesting. Again, the setup for this is that Gen G definitely the big favorites coming into this best of five. But we're not really sure what to expect, especially after, even though it was two different teams, uh, we did have a big upset in the first best of five of round two. Let's see how this one is going to go as Doran underneath the turret is trying to proxy it as this Rift Herald is coming down. But it doesn't look like Toby's going to get any played. So that just goes only over to Peanut, who is playing Maokai. Yeah, another best person to, to have it, ultimately. And we are seeing the Radiant Virtue rush here, so no Demonic first. Uh, so a bit less damage there, but then once again, Sun up his Dragon. It was a Chemtech first, so guaranteed at least a half-decent soul. TP coming in, they're going for the full fight. Yeah, this is a uh, big committal from the side of Genji. Already a lot of low health bars as they're trying to turn up to the Yone, and that's so much gold just gone! Is Zeka not able to do anything? And it's two kills onto Doran on his Aatrox. So Genji coming ahead massively in this fight. So well played there from Chovy and Doran, knocking Zeka, and while he's in the air, landing the Q3 sweet spot. Zeka had flash, Zeka had ult. In fact, if you look at Hunter Life Esports, four flashes up and unavailable, none of them used. And it was clear Gen G were very confident, very ready for that fight to start. And Hunter Life Esports didn't respond in time. Now, I'm not going to talk pace, but. <laughs> <laughs> not like this, Zeka. Uh, he is going to ult in onto pace, and maybe he gets the safety under the turret. Maybe I spoke to. Oh, very nice buffer. He is going to get the safety against four people and a teleport that was used to try to match that. Yeah, ends up being favorable for Hunter Life Esports in the end because so many members were down bot to cover pays. Uh, Viper gets some alone time mid uh, and gets that play. So it's something at least. Oh, that's pretty big actually. <laughs> Stopping the recalls. No one's in position to answer mid, but still, Genji and particularly Doran, massive benefit is on this one. And look, the thing is. Uh, Kingan's not here, he doesn't have TP's miles away, so it's a 4v5 in here, the shuffle into the flash sweet spot, delete Zeka before he can do anything, and you can see Hunter Life Esports wanted to slow play that, they wanted that one to get there, and they just wanted to buy time, and Genji refused to let that happen. Yeah, and Zeka must have been feeling kind of like uh, invulnerable in a bit, he's so, he's so far ahead, he's so fed, and he has the flash, he has so many tools, but when you just get 100 to 0 like that, Keep in mind that Doran had Duskblade finished, right? And yeah. that's not going to be great into Orn, but it's amazing <laughs> into Zekka, right? Into Yone, who's not building think, any armor. I think the armor. did like 600 damage or something ridiculous. Yeah. So if, if you uh, get to CC so him for like three seconds, the guy's just dead. Yeah, I mean, so bursty with this build that we've seen the Duskblade. Uh, it looks like he might be going Black Cleaver second, because we saw uh, the Edge of Night from Zaya's second, which was very squishy, very Feast mm -hmm. of Famine. Looks like Doran's going a little bit in the middle in this one, which I think makes sense. There's a lot of burst on the side of Hunter Life Esports, a lot of tanks to cut through on the front line. But yeah, we're in this state. The goal lead, not super significant, only a thousand and a bit. So nice, but not game ending. But the two dragon lead for Gen.G definitely puts a lot of pressure on Hunter Life Esports. Yeah. Absolutely does. As Chovy has gone for crown, um, you know, uh, stuff I like Kaisa and Yone can proc it, but I think it's still the right choice into this comp. I think it's a great choice here. Obviously, yeah. the Andrews would be phenomenal to cut through the front line, but I think here it's a lot more about surviving. Uh, and the crown is just going to force uh, Hunter Life Esports to try and proc it before the fight. And the only tool they really have to do that is Kaisa Ws, which can be blocked by your front line. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree. And we've kind of changed our tune on the crown. 
uh, especially in, in spots like this, I think it's definitely a, a good choice as King, and, you know, yeah, he, he were, doesn't have a finished item yet. There are definitely spots where it's very overrated, but I think this is one of them. And yeah, Kingen hasn't finished an item here. He was already behind the top lane matchup. You know, we saw Doran get in plates, but now with the two kills, the shutdown given over, this is not looking fun. Yeah, and it's it's what I meant. Oh, we're not going to have time for that, actually. He still gets rooted, not able to get through that one, as it's just free food is the Orn in this game. And it's like I was saying in the draft, like, Aatrox just gets a free lane. He's just sitting here, scaling against the Orn, waiting for the one big team fight to get fed, and now Doran's 3-0. and zero. Yeah, and he's just so absurdly strong uh, when it comes to these team fights. He's going to get the tower, and it's a great read from Gen G. You know, I think Honor Life Esports are expecting some contest on the top side. They heavily commit for the Herald, and clearly King and just not expecting for Peanut to be there. Yeah, well, that was close. But, you know, it's not easy to punish a Yone when he's in a soul unbound because there's very, very sort of little window to CC him. But the light's been a little bit off this game, if I'm going to be honest. His Alistair's not been as good as we've typically seen it. Maybe just warming up in this one. But, uh, yeah, not being yeah. the hottest. And actually, Doran going for Sorel the second. So going the glass wow. cannon build still. And just wanting the armor pen. So even though Kingen hasn't finished an item, when he does finish the item, it's going to be... Not as effective as maybe he'd hope. Yeah, it's uh, it's a very interesting build, and uh, I like the idea, especially when you're going against Orn Sejuani. Um, just tons of armor stacking that is going to come through from both of those two. Um, it is very squishy, as you mentioned, so you may need to rely on some of the resets. But yeah. Doran has been solid so far, so I think the thing I, I think with he'll be able to pilot it. The thing with Aatrox is his base stats are so high, and also he gets so much healing that he, even with this build, he still feels quite tanky, you know? And especially since Hard Life Esports only have two damage threats who are quite bursty, if you don't get bursted, you will just start healing up and be hard to, to cut through. Obviously, don't get me wrong, right? Yone and, and Kaisa do have a lot of sustained damage, but I think if they don't kill Doran quickly, he might just be able to heal through that. Yeah. And by the way, it is Infernal Soul. Zekka is top. He has teleport. You see Vipers in mid. Uh, they are not contesting this at all. So Genji is going to get a free Infernal Soul point. Um, and again, you remember the Chemtech Drake, which didn't really go very well. We had the, the fight over the Hextech Drake, which went even worse for all AP sports. Um, but every single time, Genji got the Drakes. And that just means that they're one step closer to this soul. Yeah, and I think. Infernal Soul for Gen.G is going to be so difficult to deal with because obviously the combat power is massive, but also the fact it gives extra wave clear as well. Hunter Life Esports don't have a great comp for Sieging, and it just means that like Genji already have good wave clear, but they will just one-shot waves once they have the Infernal Soul, which will be very awkward to deal with when you're already at a deficit. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be very overwhelming and very oppressive as Peanut's just going to smite that one down. And again, he went for this very tanky build. Just going to throw out the ultimate. We have a teleport in behind this one. Two oh, teleports, actually. As now Zekka's like, oh crap, I guess we're just going to run away. So Kingen and Zekka TP in, and then they run away. Yeah, and Genji are super happy with this. Not only do they get uh, mid tower out of this, but also they burn both TPs. Because I think, despite Hunter Life Esports being behind, Zekka in a side lane was like the potential winning formula. Yeah. But with him now beating TP, it gives Genji a much easier time to deal with this. And actually, they're TPing Chovy in to make sure nothing will come from this top lane push with the Herald. Yeah. And Zekka's just taking huge poke damage from Doran as well. And the Herald isn't going to charge. It's not in range. It's just a free 50 gold or 25 gold over to Chovy. So, yeah. Genji are kind of smashing this first game. Yeah, and you know, I think Hard Life Esports had some good moments in the early game, but as we've got towards the mid game, it feels like Genji are just trading up, right? They got that bot lane play, and then Hard Life Esports got Herald, but then we see a situation where the Herald gets nothing. You know, they got the red buff in the enemy jungle, and the two TPs come in, but then again, Hard Life Esports aren't able to find an angle, and it's starting to feel a bit rough. I will say one thing with the way the compositions differ, if Hon Life Esports find that engage, that right engage, they are still able to win from a deficit, but it's getting harder and harder as yeah. the game goes on. And the thing is as well, because this Aatrox is so fed, even if you kill Azir, even if you kill Sivir, if one of them's still alive and the Aatrox is running rampant, it might not be enough. Yeah, it's the triple threat comp 
And I, I do feel like it's part of the reason why the LCK has moved away from playing tanks on the top side. Uh, when you have someone like Doran on Aatrox, who is three and zero, it's like, did you even need Tovian Pays? But you also have those. It's just like you've got all these different presents in your arms and you can hardly carry them all. I think compared to MSI patch, where AD carry was so broken and it was just about them, they're not as strong now. And it is much more about having multiple carries. Like you can't just have Jinx will solo the whole fight. Yeah. Uh, and as a result, these compositions, yeah, uh, these compositions have done so well. Uh, and ultimately, Honor Life Esports, they need the a monster engage to make this happen, but Baron being started by Gen.G, this might be where they look for it. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have a lot of guys in the pit, but uh, again, a lot of them are very tanky. You also have the Maokai ult, and yeah, nobody just even gets in. Grizzly gets rooted, and they take the Baron for free. So Gen.G now, only seven kills in the game. They are just skipping their way to multiple Drakes and a Baron. And it's the perfect timing, because we're a minute and a half until Infernal, so Gen.G can reset, push the lanes up, and Hon Life Esports are not going to be able to contest the Dragon if they can't get out their base. So Hon Life Esports, honestly, they need to set up a Death Rush or find an Engage. They need to force a fight immediately. As soon as Gen.G get back on the map, they need to kill someone so they can fight this Dragon. Because if they don't, it's not only going to be the Baron for Gen.G, they will just pick up Soul for free as well. Yeah, I mean, this, this graph is getting exponential at this point. Like, we are just taking off into the stratosphere for Gen.G. And... Yeah, I mean, Humble Life Esports, like you mentioned, they had a, a couple of nice looks in the early game, like Zekka did get the big ultimate, got a couple of kills, but the second he got killed on the Hextech Drake, it's like they were just deflated. They're like, yeah. okay, well, we can't do anything now. Zekka, you know, he was fed and he still is, but he's nowhere near the level of Doran at this point, so not really, doesn't really feel like they believe themselves that they have an angle. And they have to find one. They have to make it. I feel like if there isn't a window, then just burst through the wall is the answer in this situation. Because if they give over this dragon, I think it's it's just very oh. doomed. You can see the TP coming in. They are looking oh for Zekka God. here. This Aatrox is enormous. <laughs> okay, like, he is so fed. And look at life, he's just going to disappear. As how will I be sports? is just going to get caught in the bottom lane. As, yeah, Doran, he can do essentially whatever he wants. But, uh, yeah, he's still pretty squishy. So the second everybody backs away, he has to as well. And Gen G with this Baron push, just trying to get as much as possible. Yeah, and the thing is, you know, we're talking about Hunter Life Esports need to be the one to start the fight. Gen G started, they're so confident themselves, they find the angle, and by doing so, eliminate the possibility for Hunter Life Esports to contest the Dragon. With Soul secured with this gold lead, I think this is game one, gonna be over and done. Yeah, certainly does feel that way. As uh, we do have Kingen upgrading his first item as the Infernal Soul is going to Gen G. So if you were uh, like, well, they have or maybe like, no, not a lot of maybes in this one. As Infernal Soul is the definitive answer here, and Genji now still with a, a bit of Baron buff. Man, this A take over the map. The Q3 is just gonna. Oh no! Oh oh god! <laughs> it is so that... scary. Oh, he's yeah, he's sunbound. Okay. That wasn't even sweet spots, by the way. There was no, no sweet spots, and I was waiting for it. That... I kind of wanted to see it, just to kind of see how much damage it yeah. did, but even so, Doran is just doing so much damage. Uh, really, really taking over this game. Yeah. It's not even uh, <laughs> not even about the Azir and the Sivir, as we mentioned before. They had a lot of tools if Homolife Esports were going to challenge them if the game did go long. But again, we don't even really get to see those, so... Yeah, Genji, even without the Baron buff, able to do a good job of poking him out. Viper now, rough decision. Do you just try to eat this one? Okay, he is going to have King and come over and block that. He's looking. Maokai ult down. This could be the window. Hon Life Esports need to find a fight, because I think that the game is just slowly bleeding out at this point. And you can tell, you know, the thing we praise them for in the uni game. Oh, uh oh. Yeah, he was just backing in a brush. I think he's okay just because he's Rakan. He's There's got no King power of the oh, there, though. Maybe he's not okay. <laughs> As there is a giant Aatrox flying at them. Yeah, they're, out. yeah, they're okay. But the thing we praised Hunter Life Esports for was, you know, waiting for the right fight, the right opportunity to take it. Mm -hmm. The thing is, when you're this far behind, it's not going to be a good fight that'll show up. You just have to take the best fight available. And if you lose, that's where all the game's over anyway. But I think they're just waiting too long. They need to force something, because all that happens is Genji getting further ahead, and people keep getting picked off. And here, yeah, Doran doesn't hit the sweet spots, but once you use the E as your only as an attempt to escape, it's just over. There's nothing you can do. They know you're coming back, and you're not strong enough to turn it around.
Yeah. Didn't even get to press his ultimate. Just uh, dead. And like the itemization as well. Take a look. Um, oh my lord! Yeah. That difference. It's it's almost five thousand. Twenty five minutes in. And take a look at the items. You got a stopwatch. For Doran, he was squishy. Now he can survive for a bit. We have Zonia's finished here for Chovy. We have Zonia's a stopwatch crown. for Pace. Yeah, there's, th this, is the, this is the problem as well, because what happens is if you don't try and force fights, we get to this point where Doran, Chovy, and Pace all have flashes and all have stasis. So even if you look for an engage now, it's not going to work. You need to try and force these cooldowns from them so that when it comes to like Infernal Soul or Baron or Elder, you have something. But they don't fight for three minutes. They will lose the Elder fight. There is too yeah. much on the side of Gen G to counteract the engage. So, Honor Life Esports, it's going to seem desperate, but they have to go for something desperate to get back in this game. Yeah. And we needed that like seven minutes ago. That would have been better. Maybe <laughs> even uh, earlier the, than that. Yeah. The best time was seven minutes ago. The next best time is right now. Yeah. Some motivational uh, posters here for Honor Life Esports might help them out. Uh, to be honest, I don't think you it know. will. I feel like you could put King and Zeka and Grizzly on a motivational poster and yeah. they would sell it. They would, actually. I, I, I'd buy that poster. <laughs> but we, uh, you'd have to believe what is said as well, you yeah. know? And uh, you can see that how many Peace Force, they, they certainly don't want to engage onto the two members that don't have stasis because they're extremely tanky. One of them is Alistair, who has ult, and the other one is Peanut, who's level 13, uh, green smite, two armor items. Yeah, uh, yeah, Viper doesn't have nearly enough AP. No good targets right now. And Honor Life Esports trying to set up. Okay, they're trying to go for it here. Is King just going to flash away? We do have the teleport coming in, but immediate stopwatch here from Doran. As now you've got the Maokai ultimate just keeping everybody kept in here. And a massive three-man echo comes in. Toby's going to miss the swipe, but it just doesn't matter. They're just going to sweep him into the bin. That's going to be the end of this one as Viper... He wishes oh. he could do anything as, oh, God. Don't look away. <laughs> your eyes. Oh, Please my don't Lord. look anymore. That was just brutal. It's devastating. Oh, man. Yeah. Aatrox, not okay. Really not okay, but phenomenal game from Gen G. You know, it started off, and I felt like Hot Life Esports put up a decent contest for a little bit. It was kind of like, you know, the the game one we saw from them when they last played each other in week nine, where Hot Life Esports started strong but couldn't follow through. Yeah. And Gen G. They got that one dragon fight, and it felt like they just took control and didn't let it go since then. Yeah, absolutely. So Genji going to take down the Nexus. That's game number one in really just straightforward fashion. Like, they just bopped him over the head with the hammer. Like, there wasn't much that Hamalai Beastboards had in the tank after this. So we're really going to have to see a switch up in game number yeah. two, like we did from T1 in the first best of five. I keep, uh, you know, drawing comparisons because... You know, if I'm like, eSports are going to win this one, it's also going to be a big upset. But this one felt almost even better than KT's game one yesterday. I, I feel like Gen G just really consistent, never really getting behind the eight ball, just in control nearly the entire time. Yeah, and I think Honor Life Esports started strong, but they just lost that confidence as soon as that fight went badly. For a team with so many engaged tools, we saw so few engages. And I think I would have preferred to see them just send it and lose quickly than to try and wait for this window that was never coming. But regardless, yeah. it's game one in a series. It's not that big of a deal. They're going to be on blue side, presumably now, and hopefully have an, an, an opportunity to trim some of these champion issues. Azir was obviously piloted very well by Chovy, but I think for me, the bigger issue was probably the Maokai and also the top matchup, right? Yeah. Doran had a free lane on the, on the Aatrox and just took over, but also the Maokai feels so suffocating to play against. That massive, hugely wide ultimate that just covers you know, basically, the whole river makes the it real so white hard. forest in this jungle matchup is the Maokai ultimate. Yeah, and uh, yeah, no, that's exactly right. Just felt like Genji never gave them an opportunity uh, to get one wombo combo, to get one engage that wasn't a Yone that one time. So game number one, very one-sided. Genji going to take it down here in pretty fast fashion. We're going to take a break and come back with the space. We'll be right back.
나오는데 여기서 그냥 먼저 봐도 되는데. 볼까 이거? 아텐 살게, 텐 살게. 와, 오른 부터 때리죠. 오른 부터, 오른 부터. 나 공, 아 뛸게. 이거 아텐 살게. 나이스. 라칸 노공, 라칸 노공. 오른 부터. 오른, 오른 잡았어. 얘들아. 다 뛰었어, 다 뛰었어. 카이사, 카이사 노플, 카이사 노플. 카이사 노플이야 이거. 그냥 끝내려가자. 어, 카이사 노플이고 이거 잡으면 끝나. 나도 믿으러 가면 되겠다. 나머지 믿어가. 나이스. My city. Welcome back to this, welcome rather to the space for the first time today as Genji, expectedly so, takes game one against Hanwha Life Esports. But the early game, we, we had a bit of hope if you're a Hanwha Life fan here because dive composition on one side, playing range, scaling, I want to say, on the other on the side of Genji. But in the early game, they, they kept the ball running. I mean, Atlas and I really liked the draft for Hanwha. We, oh, we yeah. were kind of watching this going, all right, well, they got everything they wanted. They got Zekka on Yone. It's a Yone Sejuani composition. And obviously, the Orn coming through here was a big, strong point, we thought, for us. Going to give you some additional scaling later on. Those ornaments going to help the Kai'Sa. And also, King In, just very good at the champion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been notable in this matchup for a really long time, which is why we sort of highlight it. Outside of that, the 2v2 of 
Maokai Azir has often been a little bit underwhelming, yeah. especially in the early stages of the game. We did see that kind of occur um, in the very early stages, but the amount of control that Genji managed to get afterwards um, was pretty prevalent. And I think we've got uh, something we can talk about as well as far as the win rate between both the Aatrox and the Ornn. You can see 18 to 13 is the historical matchup. It has always been Ornn favored. It still is. Although a little bit less now, considering the fact that we do have some buffs to the late game um, of the Aatrox. But you build Lethality generally, and a, an armor stacking tank will be better. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Aatrox doesn't pop off at the same time it used to. I feel we also saw that uh, in the game. But we were mentioning the early game and what went well on the side of Hanwalite. So let's roll the clips here and see what happened. Because Zeka got fed, mid jungle 2v2 was really, really working on their side. And then... I yeah, I, I just really feel like Hanwha really know how to play around Zekka's Yone, and I love this call here to actually hard force and not allow Genji to get the straight and just walk away with it. Zekka ends up getting a double here, and Lightpeld set this up, and he's willing to sacrifice himself to get these advantages. Then they're like, all right, we got two kills on Zekka. This is going to be our win condition. They have great vision here. Life knows Chovy's coming back to mid, and Zekka can cut him off here at the pass. He uses his dash early, so the setup here is really nice. There's not really much Chovy can do in this time. Grizzly also set up there over the wall. And now you've got this fed Yone, so things are looking even better for Hanwood. Zekka's one of his best champions, he's got three kills, they should be able to carry this game, right? Well, like, that's the whole thing, like, the whole composition is based around can we snowball yeah. from our, our mid-jungle duo, and at the beginning you're like, oh man, it's all working out, like, we've seen this composition so, so many times, maybe the is a little bit off in the current meta, but otherwise we know exactly how this one's supposed to work. So much engaged, so many opportunities, you go in, you get the kills, and that's what they were doing. And uh, unfortunately, uh, you can't stop the tape right there and just say Hama won, because that's not how it worked out. No, 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 and I'm just wondering, we can talk about this clip here, because with a dive composition like this, they need to keep on first in play, especially when you have the Maokai ult on the other side and you're not even able to contest any objective. So what could have Hanwha done better to stay in the game. I think that the setup here wasn't great, and Genji knew that the target selection was fantastic. They knew even though Yone is really hard to lock down, they actually chained that CC together really well, made sure he couldn't snap back to his uh, soul. So he's actually just isolated and killed. They pick up a huge shutdown. Doran gets two kills here. The Aatrox becomes the main character in this game. I think Apanwa played that out a little bit safer. That was not the fight they had to hard for. Zekka was completely out of position, but thought he could get that old angle. It's kind of the dichotomy between the first fight we saw there and the second one, right, where Zekka hard forced the first first one really well took that risk, the second one a little bit too much there, and that's actually where they lost control of the game. Yeah, and as soon as they're not coordinated, it just doesn't really work. And we saw that if Genji gets set up, the Nature's Grasp really does kind of tear this composition apart. If that setup isn't there and you have to walk into Hama Life Esports, they get to use the, all of their pick options in order to, to kind of ruin your phalanx, then it can work a little bit differently. And they didn't use their advantage in order to get extra vision around these drakes. And from that point on, Genji took I think it was everything um, for the next 15 minutes and Hama Life Esports got one turret. They didn't even try to contest anything until it was way too late. That's the thing, it seemed like it was a lot of confidence in the later stages of the game where it doesn't work, we're not going to try anything at all. But uh, playing for Genji here, who should be the player of the game? It was a tricky one to... It is a difficult one. All I right. think Doran was all the right. most flashy. Yeah, I mean, look, Doran actually had this matchup, right? We talked about how we like Kingen on the Orn here, but this is the, the back-breaking moment, essentially, here, when Doran is able to help isolate and kill Zekka. He ends up picking up a bunch of money here, including that shutdown. But Doran also made Kingen look very uncomfortable in the matchup, even though it's actually his second and third most played champions. Kingen third most being that uh, Orn, the Aatrox being his second, so he should understand the matchup very well. I think Doran is just completely on form right now. Obviously, after he got those kills, who cares about like how he plays out the lane? He's just so ahead, it's not going to really work. Like that he went Sorel the second here, though, and when he had the money, he used it to its fullest potential. No, he absolutely did, and I think that that was what Hama Life Esports identified, was the fact that the two kills kills that happened in that dragon fight were for this Aatrox, and that just made sure that he was able to stop Harmon Life Esports from doing anything. Like, he wins all side lanes against every option, like, it's just doomed. I think it was expected uh, to see Genji take this one, but on the side of Hanwha Life, if you want to keep the hopes alive, do you reset completely the approach you have in draft, 
how do you keep on going but trying a bit more this time and playing to your comp strength, which they did not do. I, I think they get another chance with a comp like this. I think they could play a similar style of draft if Genji lets them and they can have a better early game because they made that one mistake where Doran got fed. I think if that doesn't happen, absolutely playable here for Hanwell. I actually like that they stay on red side here, get those solo lane counter picks. Still viable here. I don't think they need to change it up just yet. You lose it again with a comp like this, though, then we can have that conversation. Yeah, and maybe ban the Maokai. It felt like they just couldn't play around it even a little bit. And yeah. so just get that off the table and then try and reset with a different structure uh, next time around. And just hope that you get that same draft because I honestly loved that draft for Hamal Life Esports. Maybe uh, adjust as far as the top side is concerned if King is not that confident, but otherwise feeling good. Well, we'll see if Genji can let them get away with it as we're going to go to game two. Casters, take it away. Thank you, space people. They're breaking it down. As Hummel Life, yes, they will move back onto the red side as, you know, give them one more chance, maybe ban away the Maokai into the Vi yep. and uh, run it back. You know, we all saw that draft and we thought it was, was pretty good, but it really just did come down to the team execution and coordination uh, as to potentially why they did not win that game. Also, the fact that Genji is just kind of pretty good. Really good at the game. Yeah, oh, yeah, I think that's <laughs> the safe statement. The thing is, I feel yeah. like. Vi, as much as Vi is like a strong pick objectively and is frustrating to play against because the opponent clicks CC, in terms of what she offers to the composition Gen G had and what she would do compared to Maokai, it's not as significant. The Maokai counteracted the Hon Life Esports composition so well, made flanks harder because of the saplings. So I think if they're going in a similar direction, they want to approach the draft in a similar way, that makes sense as adaptation. Uh, that's definitely a tweak I would love to do. and. The thing is, you know, sometimes teams, they go on a new side, they lose a game, like, let's just completely redo draft. But if Honor Life Esports have prepped for this draft, and they must have expected a lot of the picks coming out from Gen G, I think it's easier to just tweak, to just adjust, you know? You've gotten this information from game one. What was a problem? What worked? What didn't? Maybe another change in game two is you go for the Xante instead of the Orn, right? For a bit more lane pressure um, to contest the, the Aatrox, not just give him a complete freebie, because Dorian was proxy farming pretty early on with a massive CS lead. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. Or maybe it's just Kingen wasn't on his A game and they think the matchup is fine. He just needs to... A lot of things yeah. can go into this, ultimately. Certainly. I I personally, I don't know. I, I feel like Orn is really struggling in this current meta. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Lane in the past definitely was very uh, nice towards the Orn side, but... It just feels like if you're not matching the Aatrox and what he brings to the mid-game team fights, he can just, uh, again, just fly off into the stratosphere. But let's see what Hamalife Esports think as we are going to move into game number two, into the draft. The Vi ban will stay. The Renekton ban first in the Rel, so yeah. same two first bans. I think what we've seen in the LPL is they've used top lane tanks a lot more, whereas in the LCK, it's been the triple threat comps, and they've been winning out, so... I think from that perspective, the Orange is not really working as well, but maybe we've seen, you know, LCK teams scrim in LPL and Orange's been working for them. Regardless, we've seen the same bans from Gen G, which makes sense. Why would they need to adapt when things have been going well? And the same bans once again from Life Esports. So, no, Maokai Fierce pick, yeah, I, there's no reason to change that ultimately for Gen G. It was so good in that previous game. And the question is, what will Hon Life Esports tweak in this situation? You know, I, I think Kaisa still makes a lot of sense, but they could potentially go for like Aatrox, Sejuani here, Yone on three. They lose the Kaisa as a result though. But to be fair, they could take the Kaisa here and then, you know, Sejuani on three, you lose the Yone, but at least you deny the Kaisa away. Cause Genji could in theory flex the Maokai to support or even top, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't seem super likely. They're kind of deliberating here what they want to do. They're going to go for the Azir themselves, so a bit of a change in terms of compositions, right? It was Genji with a more defensive composition with the Azir Aatrox and Honolai Fees, but say, so you know what? I want to give that a go. Yeah, I mean, the difference between Game 1 and Game 2 when Genji got Aatrox was that they spent their third pick on Yone, which means that Genji could ban out two top laners that could, be, well, at least one, at least the Rumble, that could be good into the Aatrox. Humble Life Esports don't have that opportunity this time. They have to let the Rumble go over. Genji immediately snaps that one up. Oh. As Sejuani. I'm not a fan. 
I feel like the, the power of the Sejuani was is syncing with the Yone, you know? Aatrox isn't the most auto-attack reliant champion, it doesn't sync as well. And you've given up the Kaiser, which I think was still a great pick. And here, Gen G have adapted fantastically. They don't match uh, the Aatrox with the tank. They go the Rumble for lane pressure. You have the Maokai to set up for the Rumble with all that CC. Jace Maokai is that fantastic combination we've seen tons of times. And Jace long range poke is great into Azir. Go to the next phase, a lot of support bands, but not seeing any towards the AD carriers, which is surprising to me. I guess yeah. Honor Life Esports, I get it, because they just wanted the Kai's to be left, op left open, but I think Gen G, I would probably expect them to ban Kaiser here. But we'll see. You know, perhaps they're just happy leaving everything open, because if they ban Kaiser, Honor Life Esports get first choice of what's left. Yeah. Rakan's taken away just in case Zaya Rakan is the answer from Gen G. As Humble Life Esports say, please, give us Kaisa. We'd like to have that. And with the Nautilus gone, could imagine that uh, a lot of eyes are on that Kaisa pick right now. Let's see if they have some other thoughts about it. I mean, still have the Zaya available, obviously, without Rakan, but has been a strong choice yeah. nowadays. I think that's the thing, is Gen G kind of said, look, if we ban Kaisa, they just get the first pick of the next one. Ban all the supports out, thin the pool. We know they have to take Kaiser on four. So now Gen G get first pick on support with this thinned out pool. They could go for the Zaya still, still open and available. Um, they could go for the Varus in this situation to pair up with the Jace poke. Both options that are possible. Looks like they're leaning towards the Zaya. I do think Kaiser definitely has the edge in this matchup, but considering I think Gen G's top side is already so winning, I think Zaya would really be okay here if they're gonna lock it in. Yeah, I think it's fine. I, I think uh, her ability to just be very safe, reliable, and do late game damage uh, still makes her very strong as we might get this Maokai flex with the Pompey being hovered. Don't think that's going to the bottom lane, but Poppy already really good into Sejuani, Azir, even Aatrox. Yep. But... I think it shows that... they were toying with the idea, which is kind of the strength because if enough supports are banned that the pool is really dire, they had that flex in the pocket that they could use. But they end up going for Leona, so picking up one of the last engaged supports remaining uh, and providing more lockdown, allowing for the follow-up with things like the Equalizer, like the Shock Blast. Pound of Life Esports toying with what to pick, and they go for the Blitzcrank, which is definitely a pick life has had good performances on. But often Blitz was only really picked when Milio was a thing. Yeah. And I don't think it's that good here. You know, I feel like the draft in the last game, there were definitely some issues with which manifested that came out. Uh, 400 life esports, but the cohesiveness on how the, the comp was supposed to work, I favored it. Um, yeah. Not over Gen G, but compared to the draft they have now, mm -hmm. I feel like the draft they have now is a bit everywhere, and Gen G, pretty happy. You know, if they maintain distance, they have super powerful poke, they have a ton of CC, they have the equalizer. Whereas Honor Life Esports, I don't see how the Blitzcrank really fits in with this composition. And the Sejuani is a lot less impactful. Yeah, it definitely does. I think the Blitzcrank, you know, it's definitely one of these picks where if you get a pick, if you get that one hook on the Jace who is out of position, maybe you can win a mid-game team fight or regain control from behind as a welcome from Brazil for Gen G. Um, yeah, I, I think. You know, it's a very interesting pick. I actually really like the Tarek. You know, you, you're up against Rumble, you're up against Leona, Maokai, like a lot of these very predictable engaged stuff. And it's not a pick we see all the time, but I think it could have gotten some value. They toyed with the idea. Maybe it was just a hover, but either way, we are, uh, we're left with Blitzcrank. Yeah, and the thing is with Blitzcrank is there is definitely possibility for just to take over the game, but they need a perfect game for it. They need to hit the ground running, and never stop. Can't be like game one where they had a bit of an advantage and then fell off after that dragon fight. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is going to get even more interesting as we move into game number two of this best of five. This time, Kingen gets his hands on his Aatrox. Let's see how this one goes as we hop into the rip for game number two. Genji up against Hamalife Esports. Game number one was, uh, it wasn't really a fast stomp, but it was a suffocation more so, where they were always in control after like 11 minutes. Yeah. 
That feels worse, honestly. And Chemtech Dragon first again. I'm here and focused. He's no, casting, no yeah. Souls, <laughs> which is which is great. But also, I think when you see a Chemtech Dragon, it puts a lot higher priority on the soul. Because I'm we, getting the Chemtech Dragon. We've seen so many situations where one team gets two dragons, and then it's a Chemtech Soul, and both teams just lose complete interest in the soul. Like, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that won't be the case here. Do you see a ward once again down on the Raptors, trying to spot out Peanut, but he's starting his red this time. Uh, and... Again, the mid lane matchup was quite back and forth last game. I think I expect Hana Life Esports to do good in the early game. They did in the last one. But really, it's about riding that wave and maintaining the pressure. And I think the big thing is bot. If you get a lead bot, if you manage to find an advantage and free up life to go mid, even maybe to go top, that is what is going to allow Hana Life Esports to win this game, is freeing the Blitzcrank. Because I think in the 2v2, unless he finds like a god grab out of pays. They probably ain't doing anything. Yeah, very true. As um, unfortunately, Dorn does not pass the Huni test of Rumble. Uh, it did go for Scorch and Teleport. Uh, Huni always, if you go Scorch, you go Ignite. If you're gonna go Teleport, go for Gathering Storm. That's kind of what he uh, says many times. Huni now uh, today casting on the Korean side, so bu a busy man in his own right. So hopefully, saying that right now, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's probably mentioning something of the sort. Wouldn't be too surprised, but I, I'm pretty sure that Dorn passed the test in game one. So let's see if he gets across the line anyways. A nice hook comes in onto Delight this time. And Peanut is in the enemy jungle, getting very aggressive on the Grizzly here. He's just going to uh, charge into him and push Peanut out. Yeah, really good grab from Life to be in the flash. But still, cleanse down for Viper does set up for a potential gank with a flash root from Peanut. So both... Honestly, junglers have a chance to impact the bot lane now. And, you know, we're talking about how important this matchup is going to be. So it's really solid from life to be able to be in that flash from Blight. Because I think if Grizzly turns up, it's very easy just to flash E the Leona and then pull her in once again. By that point, Sejuani passive is stacked and it's easy as that. Mm -hmm. Grizzly just going to get back to regular scheduled programming. A bit annoyed by the invade as we do have a nice combo in the top side. The rumble can be very good as long as you avoid all of the sweet spots from yeah, I feel like, Aatrox. I feel like a lot of matchups in the Aatrox, the ones that do well, it's like it's great until he lands his combo on you and then it feels not so good. <laughs> uh, just try and just don't get hit by the big damage bit. I yeah, I mean, you know, he is balanced around if he hits it. You know what, he's Brendan, good. I'm going to have to interrupt and if he's, he's not, not balanced. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's, he's yeah, <laughs> you know what? You're right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think, he, yeah, that's true. Um, uh, you know what's the hilarious thing is that they buffed him, and then on next patch, immediately nerf exactly <laughs> what they thought. They're like, whoa. Yeah. You know, Just that, like Rek'Sai, right? They admitted their mistake. Yeah. Uh, Rek'Sai nerfed five times since he got buffed and we still uh, still never seen her. Uh, never yeah. seen her in, in, in pro play. Apart from that one game that Umpty played and it went horrifically. Yeah. Uh, maybe that did uh, kind of make people a little bit wary of picking that one up again. The Aatrox, especially when we're getting Renekton and Jax, just uh, banned in both games. It, it just makes it such a nice pickup. So, because even though the Rumble is still here, uh, the Aatrox is still always going to be viable. It's not going to be the free lane they, like the Ornn was, but I'm uh, still going to have a lot of pressure in the mid yeah. game. Honestly, Aatrox kind of feels like Gwen when she was OP in the sense that if you don't crush it, it's just going to be so obnoxious later on to deal with. Um, and I feel like you really have to do such a good job. And in a game like this, where bot lane is going to be the focus, it does allow the Aatrox just to kind of have a good time in the 1v1. But we still haven't seen a return to bot, and time's a ticking. That cleanse isn't far away from being back up. And I would love to see Genji try and capitalize on that before it becomes available. Yeah, I mean, Peanut uh, could go for the angle here as he figures out how to uh, kill the Raptor there. He is actually in mid as Zekka hits level six. That's not really gonna do much. Now pathing down towards bot. But yeah, these hooks not really landing either. Well, actually that did land. It just landed on a minion. 
if that was his goal to, to, to bring that minion in, he's yeah, doing he's a good spinning job. out the wave, you know, yeah, like he yeah. doesn't want to get dove, so he's gonna pull in the yeah, yeah, blitz wave clear. Yeah, I'm seeing Viper's the angle. like, I want that minion, but it's a bit too far away. Can you bring it to me? He's yeah. like, you know what? I have the perfect ability for that. Life is, uh, you know, he's just perfect on this pick. Okay, this is actually a. <laughs> this is too late because the cleanse is back up from Viper, but maybe Peanut's thinking. They're going to make something happen mm -hmm. with the summoner being available. The light will be the focus, you'd think. Well, the flash is going to come in. They're trying to take down life, and it should be as easy as that. First blood given over to Leona as the Ignite Tick is going to pick up the kill. And unfortunately, Grizzly just not in position to help out on that one. Life just gets 100 to 0. And that's a trick, right? Because Viper's cleanse came back up, but life never had cleanse. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you could just do that. Uh, yeah, great layering of CC, and again, this bits crank, I feel like it needed to find some momentum in this game. And it's only one death, but definitely not a positive for how uh, Hunter Life Esports won the game to go. Yeah, definitely pretty rough. Nice setup gank here from Peanut, just able to sneak on in, flashes onto Life. Life could have potentially flashed the second he saw the Maokai. Yeah. And then maybe he gets enough distance and enough time for Grizzly, but instead, just gonna hold on to that flash for the next time. I think what you're really scared of is if you flash and you go for it and you're a little late and Maokai's already like flash did you, then you just been flash and die. And has a rumble on top of him that has to blow the world ender now as you can see that the rumble wasn't available to be picked as it was banned in the second phase in game one. But in game two, when uh, Kingen does prioritize this pick, he immediately does get countered by the rumble. That was with Hex Drinker as well. That's kind of brutal. Yeah. And uh, the Rumble has a spell book. What was that? A tome? Amp tome. Oh, yeah. He has a whole amp tome. So. And a Doran's ring. Oh, I think that's fair. You know, Doran has his own ring, so I think he should just be able to melt you. Yeah. I think it's absurd how much damage that Rumble, how high his base damages are. I think people, like, I mean, obviously AP is nice on him, but that's why Pen is so good for him, because he just absolutely massacres. But even then, he doesn't have any Pen. He doesn't have Sorg Shoes. His base damages are just kind of absurd. And the changes they did to him that kind of brought him in the meta with him having so much more heat where he's above uh, the heated moment just makes him so powerful. Mm -hmm. So the top lane is going pretty heavily in favor as this Maokai that you didn't ban just pressed star on you again and they took a Rift Herald. How Life Esports not able to respond to this. Life is here in the mid lane, but you know, the supports never even really got a chance to engage on that fight. So yeah. it didn't even didn't even matter that both of them were here. I mean, at least Hot Life Esports have a dragon, and next one being Cloud, plenty of potentially good souls coming up, so... It's they... Ocean. Oh man, that would feel so rough. <laughs> <laughs> at least it'd be okay against the Jace poke. Yeah. But it would also mean that Peanut would have a million bushes to throw saplings in. Yeah, that's true. N not, a, not that fun. A lot of uh, sneaky stuff to hide in, which can lead to some cool moments. We did see a, a three-man, or I think it was actually four-man uh, Jax Counter-Strike from the brush uh, earlier on this week uh, at the Dragon. But let's see. Don't want to call that one too early. As Chovy versus Zekka has been, who can push faster? Yeah. This is what the mid laners do now. That's 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 your job. Just push lane um, and try and find advantages. Zek has been doing pretty good in his ear, and you know, for a player who a lot of the expectation on him was, you know, you can play melee champs. Your Kali's good, your Yoni's good, but not as good on mages. He's really shown his proficiency for picks like his ear during this season. The Tristana as well. You know, it's definitely an aggressive pick, but not something you'd typically attribute to him. He's been really, really solid on. I think a lot of people put votes in for him for the MVP even for being high up in the old pro. And I think he has been the star member for Honor Life Esports to split. Yeah, no, he's definitely uh, shown some really nice uh, growth here as a player. So definitely a, a good shout as nowadays in this game, doing a good job pushing Toby into the turret. Tur uh, Toby still has not backed and teleported back into the lane. So just holding on, trying to be a force, trying to get priority for his team. And it's JNG are sitting on about a thousand and a half gold lead at this point in time. Yeah, I think they're looking for a window to Herald, but with Zeka maintaining prior like this, it's very hard to find one mid. Uh, and we'll see what they end up going for. With Dragon in a minute 40, they could just lean on that to try and find the angle. 
We'll see. That'll be the next big point, I think. Second Dragon, we obviously saw this, the Dragon fight, Second Dragon in the last game being very impactful. That was kind of what defined it. Here as well, uh, expect it to be pretty consequential. And also, looking at how Genji used the Herald based on it, we can see they have swapped Pays up towards the top side, looking to potentially make something happen. But Peanut is spotted, so knowing he's the one with the Herald, Hon Life Esports should be expecting something to be happening top lane soon. Yeah, well, Kangen is about to finish his back. There it is, does not have teleport. So, <laughs> I guess they're just going to drop it and get paid some gold? Yep. Kind of looking like that's what's going to happen here. Chovy TPing in to cover. We did see Viper picking up a second play bot lane, so he's doing okay there, but Pay is here, could easily get a ton. And what, what it, like, they're just not responding to this at all. I mean, they're just going to let this one go down fully. Gen Z, okay, finally. We are going to have the teleport coming in from Zekka, but only after Paze picks up two, maybe even three solo plates. Yeah. That I was guess one of them is split with the jungler, of course. But. That was so much. And the thing is, I think Honor Life Esports expected Gen G to set up for the dragon. But Gen G just were like, no, we'd rather take the gold. All right, well, Chovy is going to be forced to flash. Definitely a good moment to flash after a mistake like that. You don't want to... You don't want to make things a little bit iffy, especially with the dragon about to pop up. The thing is, with them defending top with a TP from Zekka, they gave up control of the bot side river. So, like, at least yeah. you know, you've already lost out on the top tower play. It's happened. It's done. But now, because you're not getting control of the bot side, you're not getting dragon necessarily. It looks like Gen G aren't that bothered, though. Pina isn't even anywhere near the dragon. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they might just give it up and say, well, we, we made a big play on top. It's it's okay. It is just the one cloud. Uh, this is going to mean that Tenji won't get that springboard into a potential very early soul like they did in game one. Let's see what it is, as it is Infernal again. So a second Infernal soul yeah. coming through. Pretty big for either team. Both of them have some long-range poke that can benefit from that with Kai'Sa Ws and the Jace Shock Blast. I will say, I think Genji may be the move top with Pays kind of made them locked into the lane assignments where they couldn't really rotate down towards bot. But now they're looking to amplify the pressure. I mean, they're going to hook Peanut here. That's not who you want to be dragging in, but might have been able to stop a little dive, especially because life is here. Yeah, I think life being there made them not want to go for the dive. And it also stopped Peanut from doing the whole ult and then going to tower. But you're never really going to kill him because not only is he tanky, but also with his W resetting aggro, he wasn't even tanking the tower. It's very hard to find something from that. But still, Hunter Life Esports defend their top tower for a little bit longer. Uh, and we are about to see plates fade off in about 20 seconds. Yeah. And uh, we're definitely going to see just how many plates went to either side. You did see a couple of plates go the way of Home Life Esports in the bottom lane, at least. So they got that. They also got the one plate in mid, which I would assume, based on the amount of time Zekka spent under that tower, uh, he must have picked up at least one from that. Yeah, I guess we, we'll see in a second. A lot of gold pays, I, I think, is the main thing. Yeah, 437 onto the Zaya feels pretty good. Decent amount for Doran as well, so... They only got one plate on this side of Family Life Esports. I mean, they got three, but only one... I think it must have just been... Viper picked one up and, uh, like, hit it. So he must have not been there for the first one, and Zekka must have not been there for the mid one, so they didn't get much, which is kind of why we're seeing this about 2,000 gold lead for Gen G. Now, Hunter Life Esports have the Dragon lead. Infernal Soul, definitely a nice one to have, but doesn't really matter if you aren't able to capitalize, and this is kind of the point in the game where Hunter Life Esports started to fall off. And they are already down in gold. All right, little play up in the top side. We don't have flash here for Jovi. He's in a lot of trouble. As he is running away pretty fast. He's got Peanut and Delight as the W comes through. Jovi's still alive, but the ult is going to hit him, but not before. We see life go down as well. Grizzly going to get rooted down. A couple of teleports into the top side. And Gen G, they just want to back off of this one. The zoning ultimate, quite literally, just to stop Home Life Esports from engaging any further. Yeah, and in a very scrappy there. A lot of people, you know, we saw Hound Life Esports come in for Chovy. Chovy nearly gets out because uh, Peanut's there to back him up. But then all of Hound Life Esports were as well. And Dorn, why did you go that way? You know, some questions we'll never know the answers to. But uh, Dorian is going to go down. He could have just run through mid. There was no one blocking. He could have just ran over that. I guess maybe the thought process was if they stopped chasing him, he could go for a flank. But it's very weird. Kind of just gave them a kill for free, and Honolife Esports to take the Herald as well. 
And they're going to catch Peanut here as well, who was just watching, I guess? I'm not 100% sure. He's going to have to flash away. Don't think you're ever going to really steal that one unless Grizzly's doing it alone. So Hamalai Esports taking some steps to come back in this game. Yeah, and you can see it kind of looked like maybe Hanalei Life Esports could have overstepped because Gen G got there first, but there was so much backup following them. And we end up in this uncomfortable position where, you know, Paze dodges the ult and Chobi dies. I think it's better than Paze, who's got all his abilities and health, uh, getting hit by it. But the end result is everything has to be burned to get out. And again, you know, Doran was running towards, like, Rafter's bush. That was the area he was in when he was leaving. And instead, he, like, looped around top for some reason. Well, we have a turret down as now Toby is extremely low and Delight is here to support him and escort him out. So maybe a first item buy for Chovy finally as he was spending some time up in the top lane and nearly got punished again. Just feels like a lot of the play so far. Oh, Zeka. Oh, well, uh, he is going to shuffle all the way into his own jungle. Has that one blocked by life as well, but still the Q to come in. No flash available. That is oh. going to miss as well. This is getting really down and dirty in this game as now life is quite fast. Not sure if Pino's got another W. No, and life's just going to get away. Nobody dies in that entire tree. What a disaster for Gen G. You know, we see King and taking a tower for free on the bot side, but also just that play, like, delight. Very narrowly missing the E flash there. And also because so much attention was put top, it allows Honolai Life Esports a successful second Herald. And if you look at the bot side of the map, there is no vision for Gen G other than that one in the river. Dragon up in 15, this will be third for Honolai Life Esports. Yeah, I mean, they're just stacking it up. They have total control on the bottom side of the map, as you mentioned. Uh, no ability to teleport, not that they do have teleport either. So let's see how this one is going to go. As Shinji, they say, well, it's we can't fight it. You can have it. Well, if eSports, they're going to take an Infernal Drake. As everybody on their side really going to enjoy that. It feels like Hunter Life eSports starting to make stuff happen in the mid game, and Genji really bumbling. You know, that early advantage. A lot of it fading away, but Triple Dragon on life is going to be a threat throughout the game. No longer can you give up a Dragon in return for a Baron, for an Inhibitor Tower. If you give Soul over to Honor Life Esports, it's going to make the game so much harder. Mm -hmm. yeah, it kind of feels like both teams uh, kind of avoiding too much action. Genji trying to go for it, but kind of fumbling a little bit. and. All of the dragons, we haven't had any fights for them. It's just been free. Like, Humble Life Esports have just been collecting them, like pass and go. Chovy's back here on the top side, but he's getting out farmed uh, by Zekka, who has a crown. So, those accelerated Chonk Blast, which is a large portion of the damage, is just negated immediately. Very common item purchase in the Jace nowadays is Grizzly. They have to charge over the wall. It's totally fine. And once again, King's getting some alone time in the bottom lane. Yeah, he's just kind of seen him a lot, just bot, just farming his way up. Uh, you know, there was a deficit between the top laners, but he's starting to catch back up. And Zeke is obviously, as you said, really far ahead. So, I don't like these sports looking a lot more comfortable. When we factor in, things kind of backfired massively for them at like the 11-minute mark. We're in a situation here where they're still in a good spot. They are behind in gold by about 2,000, but I don't think it's too much of an issue when you have those dragons in the pocket. And I think the game is all going to come to a head at this fourth dragon and it really comes down to how Gen G approach it they haven't fought one so far they need to not only win the fight but also secure the dragon at least they'll be able to transition it into a baron if they win the fight though yeah if we uh if we ever get there as we do see Zeka is about uh, a level and a bit ahead of Chovy who has just kind of been it's been playing Jace but we haven't really noticed it doing too much in the game so far in terms of damage uh, Doran certainly getting matched in the side lane now by Kingen, although Doran is trying to push him out at this point in time. x Drinker definitely helping out with that just a bit. Helps that he got his first item as well. Yeah, we actually see the AD Kaiser coming out from Viper, so not going to have as much poke as we typically see. Means Chovy is going to be pretty uncontested when it comes to setting up for poke, but I think it's important for Gen G to establish themselves early, get control, and land the poke, but it's honestly pretty unfortunate that's an infernal map for them. 
because one of the things with the Infernal Map is the lack of rushes for the Maokai, but also with that wall knocked out near the blue buff, it's so much easier to push in. If the enemy team has control of an area, normally you have to walk all the way around that big wall to get to approach from a different direction, but here you can just walk straight through. Um, so, Genji, do you want to get there early? But I'm not sure that's going to stop Honor Life Esports from pushing in. Well, I feel like at this point, maybe Home Life Esports stopping themselves from pushing in, as neither see team seems to like to go for a fight at this point in time. And on the side of Hama, they just want to wait for this Infernal Drake, so they're just going to obviously sit back, farm up for that. But on the side of Gen G, you know, I, I suppose you have some scaling components with the Zaya, even the Rumble a bit, but, uh, yeah, I mean, your Jace is going to do a bit less and less, especially the Azir with the Crown. You've got the... Radiant Virtue here for Grizzly, able to tank up a lot of Shock Blasts, and I don't know, I, I we just really need to see one of these teams do something on this Dragon, especially Gen.G. I'm very curious to see how they are going to take this fight. Especially with Rumble, I mean, traditionally, way, way back in the day when Dragon used to give gold and was super valuable, Rumble was like the king because he was so good in those Dragon fights, and as much as that's not, the game is very different now, that still kind of holds true that in those early dragon fights, Rumble can just do so much, and Genji haven't. So we'll see. They have picked up some big spikes, right? Like they have the Navori for Pays, they have the uh, Manamune finished for Chovi, but it is Han Life Esports who are on the objective first, but both teams looking to set up here. Yeah, you have to. I mean, you, you can't just give this one for free, as there's the hook on a Peanut. This Blitzcrank actually getting some value. Again, Peanut's pretty tanky, but he still has to flash away. And now that's flashed down on your Maokai. He still holds on to the Nature's Grasp as I'm only Esports just running up the Baron, actually. They say we've chunked out Peanut enough and the Drake isn't spawned yet. Might as well go for it. Why not just immediately flash as Peanut? You know in that situation you're going to have to flash, but by holding off, he ends up getting chunked and now isn't there for Baron. And Genji is trying to approach, but the Baron is just gone. All right, trying to go for a uh, Solar Flare steal. That's not going to work. Let's see about this fight, though. The Flash coming in. A huge equalizer going to slow and burn. A lot of the members of Hummel Life Esports is Toby over the wall. They're going to force this fight to light. Is taking up so much on this Eclipse Leon. Oh! This King in gets a massive dunk on the two here in the front line as Pays is trying to flash and trying to do something in this fight, but he's not even going to win the 1v1. And now Hamal AV Sports, they take the Baron and a bonus three kills. And now they're just going to be able to reset and go Dragon. This game has gone from a slow, stable kind of back and well not really back and forth just slow and stable to completely out of control and Honor Life Esports are going to take two massive objectives as a result of Light tries to go for the steal but it's a bit too early and then here Light with the grab forces both the flash from Duran and Pays as old and things look good here for Gen G but they overcommit Chovy flashing over the wall to burst the Sejuani not the greatest play and then Kingen gets a beautiful <laughs> Q3 845 damage there to Chovy just deletes him in here. Hayes trying to make it work but Viper with a fancy feat with the ult. And the fans pretty excited with that result. Yeah a little bit um, and I would be too if uh, you know uh, this is confusing. Delight in a really uncomfortable spot now as Chovy's like, maybe we can do something? No, it's just going to be Infernal Soul, Hama Life Esports taking more names. This Equalizer is going to come down here, but we have Teleport available. King and now trying to take a name of his own as Doran bullied him early on, but he's getting bullied now as the Blast Code not even going to save him. And Hama Life Esports, looks like they might be taking this game number two. Looks like it. I feel like the thing is with the previous game is Honor Life Esports got behind and the game just slowly closed out where they didn't really have control. Genji tried to send it hard, try to come back in the game with a big fight, which you know I kind of respect, but it has resulted in the game very quickly falling out of their control. Infernal Soul for Honor Life Esports uh, is going to be very painful to deal with. Yeah, definitely will be. Honor Life Esports a very balanced approach. They take everything on the map. Uh, they do not break any inhibitors, but let's take a look once again as... Yeah... Not sure about that one from Delight. Uh, nothing else to say on that subject. And then we get the follow-up here where Genji are like, look, we got to fight now. Got to try and defend the tower, I guess? I don't know, it's just very weird. Someone gets picked and they're like, Doran comes in just to get killed as well. Genji kind of crumbling. A little bit in this one. 
Yeah, they've uh, looked a little bit off kilter ever since the early game. Not really able to get anything going in terms of a snowball and how life esports were like, okay, I guess we don't even, you know, have to deal with some of our rough, tra uh, rough transition phases that we've had in past games. We can just kind of stroll on for free and take a bunch of drakes and, and fights from here on out. As, I mean, this is just pure desperation Ooh. now as the hook is going to miss. But yeah, Solar Flare into the crown is here. Not sure. Yeah, but there's no way they were using it to be in the crown. I think it doesn't make any sense, but either way, they get it down. Peanut, I guess, can look for an old angle, but it's just so slow moving that unless you're coming from like a flank, they'll just walk away from it. And Viper's confident just go in a side lane and take the tower here. Once again, we just see uh, life is basically on Featherstorm burning duty as this Jace has really not worked out. Zekka three levels ahead of his opponent here in the mid lane. And uh, he's essentially just uh, enjoyed a very comfortable ride as Peanut does take a lot of the aggro, but immediately the Amber Survive comes in and denies that Leona. Lots of damage into Zekka though, they will take him down. And that might put an end to this push. Sadly, Leona gets the kill though. There was only a small bounty, but not ideal to be picking up that kill. And even though it's not an AP Kaiser, the Infinal Soul definitely gonna help with that poke damage. It does mean you don't get the refund uh, that you get if you have it evolved. By the way, Genji. Oh my god. <laughs> my heart just like. Stopped. That would have been the end of him. Yeah. Yeah, that would that's nightmare. Oh uh... Uh, wow, okay. Yeah, I mean, the Rumble can pump some damage. We haven't really seen it because they are pretty far behind. But yeah, Viper kind of disrespecting that one a little bit. Yeah. Surely Homolife Esports just push forward with their Infernal Soul and, and take the game, right? I mean, this is kind of right. not the cleanest one we've ever seen. No, and I think one of the things with the Infernal Soul is that, don't get me wrong, it's powerful and the stats are great. But also, if like your carry gets one shot, it's not really doing anything to help them, you know? Like, more damage is great, but if Gen G got like a phenomenal engage and kill Viper, it's not like Mountain that's making that more difficult, mm -hmm. or Hex deck that Pirma slows everyone so they can't even get in position. It's definitely a, a fantastic soul, but there's a bit more volatility involved. And, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're just dead. Well. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Delight, don't let's, go, Delight, let's let see. it go. Let's see. Uh, oh, no, he's dead. Okay, just trying to, trying to get some pressure relief. Trying to set up for the Baron, but unfortunately that's going to lead to Doran's death. He does have teleport, but uh, this Baron can take damage for about 16, 17 seconds before he even revives. As the rest of Genji are here in mid trying to make a stand. Okay, the tier one is pretty good with an objective bounty as well, but when the enemy team gets a Baron, not the great trade. Uh, and if they can stall the Baron out for a bit, Doran could TP in. The thing is, if they give up the Baron, it's such a boost for the Elder fight. Oh, that's that's actually some big burst. Right, they're trying to get in onto Peanut, but he just flashes away from this one. The teleport coming in as King in. 10 seconds. Gonna zone them away as some time is bought here for Gen.G. Humalai Peace Force, they really need to start this Baron and not get caught in the pit as they will begin to burn it down. But Peanut's ultimate will be used. He's trying to get in the pit. He steals it away. Peanut gonna take down the Baron as now we have Doran back in and no Humalai Peace it. Force have just given Genji the opportunity and Genji will snatch this game away from them just like that. It's only Viper up and it's not even the AP Kaiser. You don't have to wave clear from shit. Viper stopped his recall because he knows Doran's coming. Doran just needs to buy time. Yeah, and Doran just trying to survive, trying to stop him from backing. The flash comes in, but this push in a mid. It's going to end. Genji's just going to end the game 30 minutes in. As the Baron fight, we knew it was going to be a bit risky. And Viper now going to try to back. I don't think he's got enough time. The wave is here. The autos are coming in, raining down onto the Nexus turrets as Light and is going to get a block by Delight, who just flashes in front, and that's going to do it. Gen G going to take game number two in the span of under a minute. What a disaster when a team does. I feel like they did everything right. You know, they got the lead, they maintained it, they were setting up, and they lose one fight. One fight was all it took for them to lose the game. The Baron wasn't even that big of a consequence. Losing the Baron is whatever. The fight was the big thing, though. Even if they'd managed to not end at that point, they would have taken Elder. It would have been doomed. But for them to be doing so well, and then to lose off the back of that, 
it's not just about the fact that they now are down 0-2. That is heartbreaking for Hunter yeah. Life Esports. How do you mentally reset off the back of that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this game was... <laughs> we said it jokingly when they got the Infernal, so they're like, okay, they're just going to push in and end the game. Like, they're just going to win, right? Surely. Well, no. It, it all came down to a, a barren play that just happened a couple of steps too slowly. And Humble Life Esports, they had total control of this game. Gen.G found one angle. Take a look at that graph, the gold difference. I mean, this was Hanma Life's game to lose, and Gen.G were like, oh, no, it's okay, we'll just take that one. We'll just take this win, 2-0. So, it must be so frustrating, and especially to reflect on this one, for this entire game to feel like it was going so positively and come down to that, like, one mistake, one decision where things just backfired, yeah, I, it's a hard one. You know, ultimately, the positives you can take away from that is Honor Life Esports looked good for like 95% of that game. Yeah. Um, We're going to take yeah. a look at the replay. Yeah, so ultimately, Life chunked out already. They go on the objective again. Peanut manages to get into the pit, but the main thing is this big ult. Zek and Viper are trapped in the Baron pit. And meanwhile, Grizzly is focused down. Life doesn't hit the grab. They delete the Blitzcrank, and then the ult comes in and again. I don't think Zekka or Viper did anything that fight, and it's, I'm not blaming them for them, them for it. It's just yeah. they were trapped in the pit first by the uh, the Malkel, then by the Equalizer. It was just not the best setup for the side of Honor Life Esports, but a beautiful team fight from Gen G, and that is all it took. Just one team fight, and they win. Yeah, 30 minutes in. If you're gonna get aced, you're gonna lose the game, even with the tier one uh, just being taken just minutes before. As guys, Gen G, they snapped away at game two. We're going to have a break in the space and see what they thought about that. あ、いいよ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。ここ。
파티에요 아주 마지막에 이기는 게 최후의 승자죠 빅게임의 악마 모드 온 Welcome back to the space, everyone, as Genji leads the series 2-0. And I really didn't prepare for this debrief, honestly, given how the game went. But it just takes one fight sometimes, even though uh, it feels like Hanwha Life keeps on improving game after game. But yeah, maybe next time they don't throw the winning fight. That, that is sad. Yeah, it's, side, uh, yeah, it's honestly like you're losing a game like this and then having to then reverse sweep actually to win this series and go straight to that winner's finals. I mean, I just don't see it at this point. I, if they can pull it off, it would be the craziest thing we've seen in years. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, look, you can look to Zeka and look to Kingen and look back to 2022 and ask the question of can they do it again? Is the unbreakable spirit with them or was it with Beryl? Was it with Deft? Is it in North America with Pyoshik? Um, I don't necessarily think it's here tonight because after a loss like that, it is heartbreaking to now move to match point for Genji. Yeah, how, how do you come back from this? How do you mentally come back from this? But before we go to what went wrong, let's talk about what went right maybe and discuss different approaches here in draft. When you see that Hanwha Life identifies Aatrox as being the main issue and not specifically Maokai, what, what is your take on these guys and the rest of the team? I, I felt like this was a kind of weird adaptation here from Hanwha Life because they left the Maokai open. We were pretty against that. We didn't like that at all. Um, ultimately ended up losing them the game as well. We can zoom in on that later. But then picking the Aatrox here blind early on when Doran has the opportunity to play Rumble into this when it's also a Maokai composition does feel really risky. And Doran did run the early laning phase and then obviously the Blitzcrank pick here, don't hate it, but it, I think limits how much you can team fight in the late game if you're not massively ahead. Yeah, and also the Blitzcrank isn't necessarily that strong in lane as well. I think Life plays the Blitzcrank better than a lot of our other yeah. Blitzcranks here in the LCK. I think he has a lot of confidence. The guy picks up POGs almost every time he wins on the champion. Um, so you can understand why they're picking it from like a comfort standpoint. But I want to go back to the Maokai. I think that like misidentifying what went wrong in the first draft is a large reason why things uh, didn't feel as good going into this game. However, the adaptation in gameplay definitely yeah. worked out for Hanwha Life Esports because the way that we need to talk about this game is that Hanwha won until they lost, right? So obviously what they did, it worked. As we jump into like this first like introduction of them doing well. This Baron fight is not like the one that happens afterwards because Hanwha Life have enough control over this zone. They've been getting objectives left after right or left and right, I don't know why I said it that way, but anyway, they got all of the objectives essentially here in the early game. Genji weren't able to contest. They had this choke point control, the Maokai ultimate not too impactful here. Doran does a lot of damage, and then Viper has the outplay here on Paze. And if, ultimately, I think if you end up winning this fight as Genji, it's fine. They didn't have the great lockdown. The Maokai ultimate is too slow, obviously, to catch that fight. But this what felt like the game was doomed at this point for Genji. That was your last chance. You didn't end up winning this fight. Now you have no control. They're going to get Infernal Soul. They're going to have all the waves controlling the entire map. You have no vision whatsoever. And then... Uh, yeah, and then it all kind of goes wrong. Uh -oh. But after this, Hummel Life Esports does amazing things, get them, gets themselves into a phenomenal position, and then Grizzly exits the pit. How did this happen? Yeah, thank you. Well, what was that? Another so, burger flip. I think the, the fear here is, okay, if we don't turn this, we're going to lose this fight no matter what. And Grizzly is like, all right, then they're definitely in split calls here. And Grizzly decides to go over. Peanut gets the steal, but they lose the fight anyway. So they, they get neither uh, the win or the Baron. And they decided to flip for this when they had Infernal Soul. They could have slow played it. They could have backed away. They could have reset the Baron. You have so many advantages. Don't lose a game where this was Elder spawning in like 30 seconds. You lose this Baron, you lose the game no matter what. Even if you only lose like two members, they're just gonna go get Elder, you lose. So why force this one? They got to end the game because they got the full wipe. Yeah, and the thing is, like, it's not even necessarily a flip. They just gave the spatula to Gen G. That's what happened. They just relinquished their right to the barbecue. They weren't even allowed in. Like, they were they were cooking up a storm. Everything was great. If you rush down that Baron, you at least get the objective and you don't lose the game, right? Because yeah. Baron-empowered minions make it very, very easy for them to just pile down the mid lane and just win it. But 
I don't know, man. Like, that call was just not it. That's what I don't understand. Everything was really clean and smooth so far on the side of Hanwha Life. When you think of Game 1 and learnings, taking them to Game 2, macro was clean, execution was clean. They were forcing plays, but the good ones, and they were setting up for the right place. So, not being able to <laughs> land at the finish line is quite sad for them. We'll see if they can recover from this one. But focusing on Genji, I think uh, POG might go to Peanuts here I mean, with the game winning play. What was his Sparrow steals one. <laughs> <laughs> his, uh, his, his quote at the end was, whoops, I just oh. carried the game, uh, I think was uh, was a quote from him yeah, in, uh, in the ending moments. Yeah, I mean, look, Peanut, the, the Baron steal is critical. He had a few great moments in the early game as well. He had 100% kill uh, participation at 14. And once again, this Maokai is a huge problem. When well, the rest of the team has fallen apart, and Doran isn't having his best game outside the landing phase on the Rumble. It did look doomed, but yeah, this call here from Grizzly is going to allow him to steal this, and then his ultimate as well helps Genji win the subsequent fight. Yeah, the twisted advance actually just kind of beautiful because Peanut gets behind Grizzly and can then not be blocked moving into that pit in order to get the steal. The way he played it was amazing. 11 out of 11, right? Like, I mean, there's no other choice. No, there isn't. Uh, uh, like, that one smite is uh, the game winner. And I'm expecting some improvements and more methodical ways to approach the game on the set of Genji as well because they should be the dominant team here in this matchup. Not to disrespect Honwa Life though because clearly they took some learnings into how they approach the game. But going to game three, Honwa Life is going to be playing at blue side, and maybe Maokai being out here, or them taking it themselves. Uh, we'll see. Do you see any hope for I Honwa? It's going to be about the mental fortitude of this team, honestly. Like, the Maokai pick, they can pull that into their side for sure with this blue side. Maybe that's what they're trying to do. Maybe they get another prio pick for Zekka, maybe the Sejuani, but... Otherwise, like, you just gotta keep your heads on straight here, because a loss like that is really gonna hurt in a best of five, where you know you have to reverse sweep, you have no more room for error. Yeah, yeah and we can talk about the draft, we can talk about, like, banning Maokai's priority on Azir is looking decent here as far as getting that mid-game and late-game working out the way you want to, but... It's exactly as Wolf said, like, the draft is probably not going to matter that much. Can Harmal Life Esports mentally get back into this series after that? Uh, we have a bit more time here before we jump onto the last... I was about to say last game, the next game, uh, rather. Uh, I say last game because I think it's hard to mentally recover after a loss like this, which is my main... We have to go back to the unbreakable spirit. That's it's the, the unbreakable spirit. No, yeah, that, I that's be, the whole uh, I feel like after what was a pretty good start to game one, fantastic game two, if they end up getting 3 0 here, I feel like if you look at the results, it's not going to actually tell the story of this series. And it would be such a tragedy for Hanwu, who clearly came well prepared today, played out some great early games. Grizzly leveled up, I think, in both games yeah. more than what we saw from him in that last matchup against DRX. Fortunately, at the last moment of uh, game two, we'll, we'll kind of forget about that. But I really don't think if a 3 0 comes out here, it really. That's, is that what Hanwha deserves here? I don't think so. I hope they bounce back. Yeah, I kind of hope so too. I want an extra game at least. Yeah, at least. We, we saw some good improvements on the side of Hanwha Life. So let's see if it can take us to game four. Casters, take it away. Thank you, Laura, Atlas, and Wolf for that big breakdown. As Pina picks it up, he does set up the final winning play, which was basically the only winning play that yeah. Genji had in that game. So I feel like when, it, when a game yeah. like that happens, where you're behind the whole game and then one play wins it, whoever make that, makes that play is getting POG. Yeah. <laughs> um, just kind of how it is. Yeah, I agree with Des, though. I would love an extra game, at least, and not just because I predicted a 3-1, hmm. um, but partially. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> but either way, partially. I, I think the how, main how thing... How the part? <laughs> very, no, um, I think the main thing for Hunt Life Esports is it is hard to bounce back from this, especially the main thing is going to be Grizzly, who's obviously never experienced a situation like this. But the, the takeaway from that game should not be, oh, we lost a one game. It should be that 95% of the game, we were winning. So go to this next game, make some adjustments, and look to just get that extra 5% and you're solid. That's all you need to focus on. If you get bothered about what you could have done differently in the last game, last game's done. It's gone. Next game's going to be a different one. Uh, not in terms of the bans, though. We're getting the same bans despite a side switch. Hunter Life Esports on Red 2 games in the road, but they are banning the exact same champs. And Gen G would be banning LeBlanc here. Yep, so side switch, but same bans. Yeah. Maokai not going to be prioritized. I think Gen G will just snap that up once again. Two games in a row with Maokai, and it has been so impactful. Yeah. So, <laughs> Pina, two games in a row kind of dunks on you with the Maokai, at least not for a very long period of time. They just don't pick it up. 
Peanut is considering a lot of other options this with a big great. smile on his face. If he hovers every jungle, it's like, look at all these cool... But nope, Maokai. Yeah, that's exactly what look, he did. Look, that's the face of <laughs> I have to play Maokai three games in a row. Yeah. <laughs> hey, winning comes at a price. Yep. That's, for the Maokai player. That's part of it, but they do get the Sejone on this side, which is... You know, if, if I'm going to say... We have the Aatrox Yone. Despite the fact it's Will's skin for Akali, this feels more representative of these players right now. And the Sejuani to balance out as well. It's a strong trio, but Gen G with the Azir Maokai once again should be pretty comfortable now. I think Honda Life Esports will, without any doubt, be banning away the Zaya in this situation. Because with their composition, they're going to be diving. Perhaps they go for like Zaya Sivir as their bans. But actually, Gen G ban the Sivir away. Obviously, Utility is great with Honor Life Esports to provide pressure, but it also kind of worked out for Gen G as a defensive pick. They're going to ban away the Nautilus as well. Seems like they want to get the Kai'Sa, want to leave it open. Honor Life, it's so tricky because if you ban away the Zaya, then you're leaving Kai'Sa quite uncontested. But if you ban away the Kai'Sa, they take Zaya, and Zaya is so good into Yone. Yeah. Rakan's still available, so then Hamalai Esports have to pick the Rakan almost definitely, and then Genji get an option to I counter that, so they take the Zaya, which means... Does Kaiser it? I think it's correct to ban the Zaya in this situation. It's too good against what Han Life want to do, but Han Life Esports would love to have Kaiser here, and I think Genji have to not only deny it, but picking it for themselves is a massive boon. It would have to be the AD Kaiser though. They are very heavy in terms of AP so far, that's not too much of an issue. You know, Viper played the last game to pretty great effect. And now Honor Life Esports are going to go for the Viper Zeri. And as you said, they need to deny the Rakan, but also life on the Rakan. It's pretty good in game one in the early game, and it syncs really well with the comp, so... Ooh! Oh, this is great. This is actually phenomenal, because originally, the first time we saw Maokai support in the LCK, it was Beryl playing it into Rakan. Pretty <laughs> good matchup, because you can... <laughs> Peanut's so happy he's not to yeah. play Maokai. I feel like all those theatrics actually worked on everyone. They were yeah. like, oh man, he feels so bad. He's got to play Maokai. He's definitely playing Maokai, right? And but now then, he's not. Now he gets to play a fun champ like Poppy. But <laughs> the thing is, both champions are great at providing peel, disrupting. Every single champion on the side of Honor Life Esports has a dash, and you have a Poppy. So the control yeah. from Genji is phenomenal. But also, the Maokai matchup in the Rakan, if he W's in, you can W him at the same time dodge the knock-up and lock him in place. You can even actually interrupt his dash yep. with that. And point-and-click CC counters him. So I think it was a great adaptation from the side of uh, Gen G there. I think they got a pretty solid draft once again. But the Hot Life Esports e factor, Aatrox and the uh, Yone alongside Zeri for Viper, these are some definite comfort picks for these players. And they can pop off they can make some waves. Yeah, absolutely. I think when we see the same six target bans, three games in a row, <laughs> uh, both teams are going to get uh, tools to, to actually make work. And, you know, we had a lot of tools put together for Humble Life Esports in game two. They're going to feel like, okay, well, we probably should have won that game. Now we've got a lot of comfort. Let's make it work this time around. I'm very excited to see if they actually can. Rez, I do agree. I, I think that Gen.G also did kind of get the last laugh with this Poppy pick. So we'll see. I mean, Peanut's Poppy, a thing of legend. Uh, there's a reason why this pick became popular. It's because of Peanut. Um, let's jump out of the rift, guys, for game number three. We are ready. All righty. Let's jump onto the rift for game number three. <laughs> you ever just dance with the sand soldier? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I always love it. Yeah. You know, I, I love Zeka having such a range of emotes. All of them either shocked or angry. <laughs> but also just the fact that it's like game three, high pressure, and they're just still willing to throw down, have a little dance. And now, this is cheeky though. Like, guys, I baited it in. Baited him in into a false sense of security with my dance moves. Yeah. They don't they don't find anything. <laughs> as long as you stand right where Chovy is, you're almost always gonna be fine, even if they come out of the side brush. Grizzly uh, now has to run all the way around. It's fine, he will be there on time. Not a big deal. Yeah, interestingly, life gone the spellbook on the Rakan. 
No, there, there did used to be a trend. I remember when I was casting the LPL last year, it was on. We went like spellbook like four games in a row. On what? On, on who? Everything. It would be harder to say what he didn't go spellbook on. It was like Leona, you know, it's just, he just, Leona Rakan, pretty was much just, every chance. I was just memeing about his name, actually, but. Oh. <laughs> But yes, please continue. Yeah, Spellbook anyway, but supports. I think here yeah, the thought process being that you'll be able to switch to cleanse later on, which is going to make engaging a lot easier against the likes of Maokai, I assume is part of the thought process here. But also you get extra combat summoners. You know, if you're, if you're playing aggressive, forcing things nonstop, that does have an advantage. I think it ends up being weaker if you aren't forcing summoners, you know, because realistically you'd rather just have flash. But if everyone's flash is on cooldown, you can have that bonus summoner option. Mm. Everybody loves a bonus. Yep. Let's see if life can make it work for him. But, yeah, I, I think his Rakan was good in game one. Didn't really get a big opportunity to let it fly after the mid game, though. Oh. As here comes Peanut. Just a casual 90% win rate on this. Again, like I said, there's a reason why uh, Peanut and Pompey are a couple of words we say in the same sentence many, many, many times. Because they both start with P. Yeah. Um, the alliteration is just its just too, too powerful, too catchy. We just have to say it. Yeah, well, good job from Grizzly, though. I will say by spotting out Peanut, because I think if you end up on the Wolves and Peanut comes in and slams you into a wall, that's when things can backfire. Uh, but yeah, going to look to be contesting this. Both junglers have Smite. It looks like neither solo laner is moving right now, but look at life. He's made his way up. Yep. And now, I mean, in this 1v1, Grizzly is taking a huge amount of damage. He even gets swat by the blue buff. That's not fair, as Grizzly has to flash anyway. Peanut with the follow as the permafrost coming in. Here comes Jovi somehow here before Zekka. And is going to take first blood. And Peanut is going to taxi onto the blue buff. I think he might be able to get away. Zekka. Does have a flash, and the flash comes in. Double oh, flash up. now used to get on top of Peanut, who is still running away from them. And the unbound soul sends Zekka back, and Peanut gets out alive. You know, if game two didn't break Honor Life Esports mental, I think that play might just have done it. That is painful on so many levels. Life with a phenomenal roam up, only for it to not work out. Grizzly goes down, and then in the follow-up play, Everything burned for nothing. Yeah. If that happened in solo queue, the entire team is trolling right now. <laughs> like, immediately, okay? V Viper would just go top lady, be like, I'm done, my yeah. support goes. This game is yeah, over. It, it just so, you know, I, I say it in that manner just because we really need to make it clear how big of a mental impact that is. Like, that really that hurts hit. a lot. That hit me, and I'm not even in the game, yeah. you know? The Poppy um, getting away, man, that's frustrating. That's the worst part, I feel, because the previous play was obviously, it wasn't great objectively, but the fact that Peanut got away after everything committed, both flashes from Zekker in life for him just to walk off. That And now Grizzly's like, hey, I want to contest the jungle, and Chovy's like, no. And this is one of the things I was actually talking about before the series, is that I feel like if Chovy has prior mid, then it allows Peanut to really challenge Grizzly, and that is when he has struggled, when players like Peanut and Canyon have really taken the game to him and been very heavy-handed with invading and challenging him in the jungle. And you can see already it's it's panning out in a similar way. Peanut's on the Raptors. Well, Delight's here as well, so Zek is in a lot of trouble. Goes over the wall, uh, and uh, now he's yeah, just, he's yeah, unbound soul, and maybe they get Viper over here. It's not looking likely as Peanut's going to uh, block them for a while. We got some members coming in, but oh, it's just God. a couple of weak ones on the side of Hamalai Esports. That's going to be three kills to the side of Gen G. This game is only five and a half minutes in, and Gen G are already putting them in the dumpster. That 2,000 gold up. Chovy is 3-0. and oh. You know, I said this before, but if that previous play didn't break, <laughs> <laughs> that meant... <laughs> well, then this one surely did it, yeah. Oh, man. As just the base damages from Poppy here doing so much to Grizzly. That buckler with the blue buff chunks. And then here, life comes in, doesn't have the shield, but the heal from the Q does a lot, but Chovy gets there first. And then here in the follow-up play, the call is clearly we can't let him get away with this. And the W, <laughs> oh, man. the thing is, if Zeka had gone the other way, yeah, well, maybe he. he uh, there's so Kobe many. Also had buffs. red buff though, so it's like can't really go that way or you die. 
this just hurts. And yeah, Zeka trying to defend his jungle here, but he's so low, and it's a beautiful trap by Gen G. I mean, credit to them for making this happen. But you just see this moment where Zeka's just waiting and they're buying time, and it's just... The problem is, they try and save him, so more people end up dying than just the one. Yeah. It's almost like, okay guys, let's really play as a team. Oh, it's too easy, he says. Oh. It's too easy for General Peanut. And He's so happy he didn't have to play Maokai this time. <laughs> and honestly, it looks really easy for him in this one. I, I think, um, yeah, they, it's almost like they came in with this attitude, like, okay, we're going to really support each other. Let's make sure, like, life is level two trying to get over there, trying to help. And that's that uh, Twisted Advance you were talking about. The Light going to utilize that here as Viper will ult. And we'll get a nice amount of pressure here, at least. Yeah, I mean, that. that is one thing, is that... Oh. Uh oh. Okay. Well, that's a trade of flash uh, for flash cleanse. Yeah, pretty good. Honestly, good read from Delight. It looked like a, a moment where Hunter Life Esports had the pressure, but they find the angle to bring those summoners in return. Delight not had the best start to the series. First two games, I think he was underperforming, but this game, setting up the trap with Peanut, making that play, being pretty positive. Yeah, absolutely. Well, here comes Grizzly. He is level six. Could try to throw it into Delight, who doesn't have Flash. Um, hmm. uh, well, the Korean commentators just screamed, okay? As <laughs> now Pace oh, is going to bait. cleanse, and he is away with his ult. You know, if those previous <laughs> two plays didn't break on a light, oh, please he's don't do it to them. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not sure what. I'm assuming it's something to do with. Ult with a spell book and him thinking he had a different summoner or thinking he had Hex Flash or yeah, something along those lines. Yeah, I think he thought he had Hex Flash and he probably thought he used the Flash on the last play as now they are setting up a nice gank here for Pays as life is on the no chase, but way. guess who's here again? Oh. oh no! It's Peanut is going to get life. At least they get the light as finally Home Life Esports get one kill in this game. They bounce back, yeah. right? <laughs> they're back, right? It's not over. Jovi is going fought, but no, nah, they're just gonna let him go. Man, it is just being almost like, it's not even specifically like a comedy of errors. It's just like a comedy of really unfortunate situations for Han Uh Jovi's just waiting for that unbound soul, and he's just standing up to him. Yeah, I think, so we've seen this matchup in, uh, in game one. The difference is in that game, it was Zeka who ended up with three kills, not Chovy, who is now 3-0-1 with a 20 CS lead. And if you compare, Zeka has Boots and a Doran's Blade. And and a Doran's Shield. Oh, true, valid. Don't and forget. Chovy basically nearly has his Leandries done. Yeah. Oh, wait. I guess in theory it could be a crown again. Yeah, could but be. Whatever it is, it's nearly done. <laughs> yeah, he'll have that. Uh, has that dagger early as well, just to help with some attack speed. Did that in game one. And yeah, I mean, uh, your mid lane, you were talking about trying to get Peanut to be able to <laughs> attack Grizzly one on one. He's getting that done once again. Ace Dragon Chemtech, three in a row. Three in a row. I'm on point today. Well, it's not an Infernal Soul this time, though. True. So we get a different mean? soul. Maybe it's a Cloud Soul. Atlas is uh, the means, Atlantalist you know what today, it turns out. It means the light is very happy because his saplings won't. All the brushes won't get eliminated. Yeah, that's nice. Also, we're seeing, uh, we haven't really had time to talk about it too much, but I really liked the Cassante pick into Aatrox as well. Can deal very easily with a lot of the sweet spots. I feel like it's a better answer in this current year and current meta into Aatrox compared to the Orn of Old as over the wall we go. In is the Poppy as we do have Grizzly here. Double knockup and a lot of low health bars here on the side of Gen G as Doran on the all out is uh, trying to get away but can he as Zekka comes in and just picks up the kill. They're back. They've bounced back. They get a kill. You know, it's originally Gen G who are looking for the play but the AOE damage from the Aatrox is super dangerous to get it up close and personal to, and now I don't like he's supposed to transition straight into a Herald. He has a crown, but he doesn't have smite. Uh, neither does Grizzly. <laughs> uh, it's like a guys, oh, guys. There's no way. Oh, oh, there's man. no way. I don't, I don't even. Yeah, this I, is rough. Je uh, Toby's just gonna kill them both. I mean, Grizzly's coming in here. He's trying to taxi Zeka out of here. As now, we do have the charm underneath the turret. They should be able to get pace, right? He's no, burning. There's no, there's no way. Oh, the bounce. I think that last bounce 
is going to get him. Unfortunately, life does go down, but at least Viper picks up. Oh, well, I guess he didn't even get the kill, but at least okay. they got the kill. So let's rank them. Losing last game when you'd been winning the whole time, the yeah. first early play, the second early play, or Chovy stealing the Herald, which is the biggest tilter? I'd say the game two one. Probably, yeah. I'd say that one, and then I think the Chovy one is next, actually. I think as well, the Chovy one was after a string of them. Yeah, so, so it feels it, more it's extra power, yeah. <laughs> oh. Fortunately. Um, I mean, Gen G, you, you saw the attitude of, of, of Peanut. He's like, this is easy. He's just having a great time. Like, they are just, you know, rolling over Humble Life Esports, even after game two. It feels like they didn't really take that too heavily. They're like, well, they gave us an opportunity. We took it. Okay, we take the win. Nice. Whereas this feels like a harrowing experience for Home Life Esports. Yeah. Um, my sympathies go out. And yeah, I mean, this play, uh, they just get they get hit by the big sweet spot at the end. And the Blast Cone, which I'm sure you love, yeah. ends up disrupting the situation. Well, at least it caused some action yeah. rather than getting somebody to safety. And then here... Uh oh um, In live, looks like Pays kind of getting... Bullied a bit here on the bottom side. Does not have flash. Oh. Looks like he is just dead. Trying to turn that one around. It's not going to happen. They waited in the brush. And now Viper on this area. Two and zero. I mean, it was a nice early lead for Gen G, but the game isn't over yet. You know, I've joked a lot about how hard it is mentally for Hunter Life Esports in the back of all these mishaps in the game, too. Mm -hmm. They're still trying. They haven't stopped. At no point have they given up despite all of that. And they're still trying to make plays happen. Yeah. Well. Uh, this is Grizzly in a really unfortunate spot. He will have to flash away. Looks like Peanut and Delay don't want to follow too far, especially with Chovy. With the big wave under his turret, but they are going to get the flash out of Grizzly. As now, um, okay, well that that wasn't it, but uh, good effort, I guess. Kingen is on the chase. As he's not quite going to hit that second you know, spot. It's been a while. Doran's been like pretty consistent recently. That was a Doran moment, yeah. you know, where he just kind of randomly nearly gets himself, or often does get himself solo killed. But it's okay. But it's fine. Because it doesn't really cut well. Well, let's be real, because he's playing this haunting. Um, <laughs> he's going to survive. He will be just fine. And uh, yeah, the big lead is definitely in the mid lane. As we mentioned before, Chovy got... Uh, he's nearly got two items. Yeah. And Zeka doesn't have an item. Not yet. Not yet is true. Uh, yeah, here, the exhaust as well burns the cleanse immediately and didn't even have the ult in the situation. It wasn't even needed, but that would have been huge if you burnt the cleanse and then ulted. But either way, they end up taking down Hayes, getting a kill for Viper, and that might be the saving grace. The 2 0 1 Zeri, because realistically, when I think about team fights, as long as Zeka hits a big R, who really cares? And Viper can just do the carrying, Kingen can do the big damage with the sweet spot. Sure. You know, that's that's the copium right now if you're a Hon Honor Life Esports fan. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there is still an angle. Uh, if we just remove any kind of like, oh, the mental boom, etc. You know, we're sitting in a position where it's kind of a Zer versus Zeri. We've seen Zeri do crazy things in the past. And not to mention that the Aatrox up against another tank is mostly getting a free lane. He's behind 10 CS, but like, that's okay. Picked up an assist. He's doing just fine. It's king in, right? Could definitely see some angles where if Gen G don't lock this one down a little bit more, maybe yeah. Humble Life Esports do to Gen G what Gen G just did to them. I mean, there's a lot of engage, and if they kill Chovy, they immediately wipe such a large amount of gold off the map. So just kill Chovy, I guess, which is easier said than done. Yeah, it's pretty difficult because he's a zero with crown and they have Poppy oh, and who can position aggressively and Maokai. It's Ocean Soul. You know, Peanut, two games in a row he has Infernal Soul with Maokai where you have no brushes and then Delight plays it one game and high rolls <laughs> and gets like the infinite brush map. You know, what What are you doing? Yeah, he's, he's having maybe a little bit too much fun. We were just talking about how Amalite Esports can come back in this game. That is a shutdown onto a Yone who was very far behind just feeling much better about his position now. Yeah, I don't think the Krogs were worth it, um, but, you know, <laughs> Fetus is having a good time. <laughs> but yeah, it's a good punish, and Zeka getting the kill is massive as well. Good influx of gold for him. I believe Pina had a small bounty. Uh, yeah, yeah it's so two zero and 3 Pretty nice. And now it comes down this dragon in 30 seconds. 
We have seen item completions across the board for Hanwha Life Esports. They really don't want to give over. I mean, to be honest, individual Ocean Drakes aren't that valuable this late in the game. Well, I mean, even past the laning phase. Mm -hmm. But the soul will still be very valuable, so they definitely want to try and take this fight and not let Genji just stack them up. Yeah, I mean, if they can control vision in the uh, <laughs> in the river, that would definitely be very nice. As uh, yeah, uh, could definitely get them in a, into a good spot to get some of those engages going. As um, Let's see how it goes. I mean, this it does seem like both teams are going to be gearing up for this fight. So, importantly, Chovy's crown is down right now. And the big thing is, if they kill Chovy, kill Pays, that's the goal for Home Life Esports. Kill one of the carries, and he should just be able to clean up the tanks, but... Life? Life has smite. He's going to go for it. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I mean, Never mind. Hit. Yeah. Okay. You know what it is? Do you know what happened last game? Homolife Esports got all four dragons in Seoul, and they lost. So maybe they're like, hey, why don't we just give over dragon, give over Seoul? It's cursed. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we have seen a little bit of that, um, for sure. As Genji going to get started here on this Rift Herald. They do have the uh, top lane turret under a bit of pressure. We did see King and... Uh, was up there pressuring that is now teleporting the bottom side. Looks like Hamal Athey's is not going to fight over this one. I feel like Hamal are almost like, okay, well, let's slow things down. Let's not get too out of hand. Um, you know, we've got a couple of big picks. Viper got one. Yoni got one. And here's the one that Zeka got earlier on. Not really... Uh, Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yep, so, again, this just puts more pressure on this next dragon fight for Honor Life Esports, because by that point, Baron is going to have spawned, and it's kind of come, going to come down to that. I don't think, like, Ocean Soul is, like, an auto-win for Gen G, but generally speaking, Ocean Soul is better the bulkier you are, because you get more benefit from the sustain. Even though, obviously, like, it's a flat heal. Mm -hmm. The thing is, champions like Cassante, champions like Maokai, champions like Poppy will survive long enough, to get the benefit. Yeah. So Genji's comp will just be able to really mitigate any poke that comes out for Home, Home Life Esports, but also just the tanks will be so much more durable. So definitely helps with their chances of winning, but I don't think it makes it impossible if they do get it. But still, Home Life Esports win comfortable approaching that previous one. Next one will be a must. And I think maybe leaning towards the two item spikes, Zeku should have shield bow by then. You know, we should have uh, Sereldas for King and he's going once more, and the Navori for Viper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just biding their time. It, it does look like Genji also kind of biding their own time after a couple of mistakes, just saying, okay, we got the dragon. Just farm it out. You know, we're still ahead. A couple of mistakes here and there is not going to be the end of the world. As we do have a little setup here from Grizzly. Sun turret in position. Let's see if they actually do go for this as Peanut is here as well. Just going to throw up the stopwatches. Now they try to get in. The Wombo combo is there as they have the damage. No, they don't, Toby. It's going to live for so long. Oh Peanut my. is going to keep him alive. Delight descends an ult for good measure. As Peanut is going to keep him in this one. As Another now they're doing filter. Baron. I mean, yeah, go for the Baron. You've been a lot. No ult from Peanut, which is obviously... Ah, uh, Peanut! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, just spice it up, throw a Herald down. Yeah, sure, you know, just uh, could get interesting. As now, Peanut does not have the ult. Doran gonna take Grizzly out of the pit, he gets back in, and the smite, the Rakan, the Rakan, as Life is gonna get it down. Now, though, the fight afterwards, Jovi gets in, the damage is done, Pays picks up a one. Well, actually, he tries to get in there, they can't quite get another one, but it's still a double kill here to Jovi. As at least the Baron goes to Home Life Esports, <laughs> that, I guess. That was just so comedic the way that all panned out. <laughs> uh, just every, I think it was the right call from Home Life Esports, right? They had the double smite, they had the confidence, they knew Pina had no ult, and Chovy was chunked. And here, this is a situation where Chovy actually kind of dodged it, but didn't have confidence and just stopwatched immediately. The follow up play it looks like it's going to be enough. The Pina does a great job of disrupting. And a phenomenal ult there on the back end. So they survive, but immediately, Home Life Esports go to the Baron, and then the Herald in the pit, so we get the double. How rare is it that you <laughs> see both Void creatures yeah. in the Baron pit together? 
Uh, and then in the ensuing play, Doran drags Grizzly out. But the problem is two smites. So first comes in, second follows. But even so, you know, Viper repositions out the pit. But Gen G holds strong as a five man together. Yeah. And Honor Life Esports eventually just escape. They get the Baron, they only lose two. I think it's still fine. But the 40 seconds until that dragon, and the, they didn't really get that much gold if you look at the top left of our screens. Only up about 700. And yeah. they need to win this fight. And a lot of summoners were burned. King and no flash, Grizzly no flash, Zekka no flash. But on the other side, no one on Gen G has a flash either. Yeah, it's very true as now Viper just being zoned. Uh, they're just uh, surrounding them, I guess. Grizzly gonna get caught out here, just gonna charge away as the Sun Disk is in, but oh, like, no. what is going on in this game? Oh, it's gonna come through Grizzly. Looks like he's in a lot of trouble and will get taken out as they're they trying to the take dragon. down the dragon, but... No, they don't, they don't. They, they don't have time. It's a bit too little, too late. No smite here this time for life. I think they just wanna try and fight it. I'm just gonna ult into the nether, okay. Uh, Tovi, they have their smite with Peanut, so... Yeah, life doesn't have smite this Ocean time. Ocean Soul. Zekka, though, trying his best, trying to get on in there, but the damage is too much! Gets sweeped up and killed alongside of the Ocean Soul that gets smited down by Peanut. As Baron hands recall, it's gonna be very lucky for him, but he has that to get away. So now Gen G. The gold lead isn't super significant. A lot of it is on Trovi, but that's the thing, right? You know, you're not really that bothered about total team gold. It's about how much gold is on the carries. And three items on that Azir is very significant. Ocean Soul in pocket as well, gonna make things even harder. I don't think it's unwinnable for Honma Life Esports. I think they've been demonstrating that, but it is getting harder. It is gonna become more difficult. And all in all, it's gonna be about finding that big engage. We do see King and going for the Black Cleaver this time, so. A bit bulkier this game, not going for the glass cannon build yeah. on the Aatrox. Gonna be able to chip away at some of that armor on the Cassante and the Poppy and the Maokai and the Azir. Um, but definitely going to feel pretty good in an extended fight at least, but really I'm, I'm just not sure if they have the answer for Chovy. Like, how Life Esports have their own answers in terms of like, okay, they've got Viper, he's 2 0 one he's pretty fed. Yone can be serviceable, Aatrox can be serviceable, they don't need to be like insanely fed to get work done. But again, like who's killing Chovy? Yeah, and the thing my is, question. Chovy has this very defensive build with the Crown and the Zonyas, and it's obviously less damage output than other builds, but he does enough damage. And the thing is, it's just about surviving, and if Honor Life Esports just try and hit Gen G's front line, they lose. They have to get on the back line. And one of them is a Kaiser who's super mobile and hard to pin down. And the other one is basically an immortal uh, uh, Azir, sorry, who's going to be probably about as hard to pin down, maybe even harder. And the thing is, summoners are coming back up. Flash is going to be up for a second in Chovy, for Chovy, and Pace is having his soon. I do think something I want to praise is game one when Honor Life Esports fell behind, they didn't do much. Mm -hmm. And they let the game bleed out, and they weren't forcing summoners, so when it came to the big fights, they were all available. They've done a much better job this game of doing that, but honestly, I think you have to try and force some stuff in the next two minutes before Elder spawns. Try and get Chovy's Flash, maybe Pace's Cleanse, or something like that, because if you just wait for the Elder fight, and Chovy has Stopwatch, Crown, Flash. He isn't gonna die. Four items at that point. Oh no. Uh, not yet, just three and a half items, but uh, by the time the Elder Buff Dragon does roll around, could have that. And we're gonna have the Baron first, right? We have a minute here until the Baron spawns, so already with the support Maokai, you just build tank, you throw down saplings and all the brushes, you get a ton of vision and you control space. Yeah, I think Gen G should push for the Baron because with the Ocean Soul and so many tanks, they can tank the Baron pretty indefinitely. They'll never drop an HP because of the Soul. But also, if you let it go down to an Elder and it comes to a flip, and let's say Hon Life Esports have double smite, or even if they don't, if Grizzly gets a God smite, that will win them the game, potentially. <laughs> Whereas I think yeah. if they set up the Baron correctly, I don't think there's that many avenues for Hon Life Esports to win, so. I, I think they should look for that angle and yeah. set up there. Get get a million saplings in every brush. Yeah, I mean, that's what Delight is doing at this point in time. We did see that Zekka tried to take a trade with Chovy. I don't think he's going to be trying to do that uh, again. 
he lost half his health bar. He had to test to see if and he was I, doing I think lane. he got the oh. crown off. I wasn't it's even 100% sure. Yeah, it, it's it's back. So, you know, the, before in in game one, I'm, I I can't remember specifically what it was, but oh, never uh -oh. mind. Life in a bit of trouble here is going to get locked down. Does have a stopwatch as now the elk goes in onto Peanut, who is incredibly tanky, but this is going to force the Nature's Grasp out pretty early, just in trade for the stopwatch from the support of Hamalai Esports. Is, Grizzly is yeah, he, he's going pretty ham as now that was pretty confusing. Oh, but get Toby! They took down Toby, and that's all they had to do. Hayes trying to fight front to back, but look at Viper. They killed Toby. And I was asking, how are they going to do it? Well, I guess just like that is now Pays is getting hunted down and Hobble Life Esports, now they're going to push down the mid lane. Hobble Life Esports get the memo from last game. It doesn't matter how the game goes. It's only the last fight and they find it. Grizzly with some insane bait there where he goes <laughs> in. It looks so int and what somehow a <laughs> it allows life to get that phenomenal engage. So Darren's going to turn it back now. We do have Peanut coming up in five seconds. I don't think it's enough. There's too much damage. This one is closer. Let's see. I mean, the light's here. The Twisted Advance comes in. The Poppy Ultimate and you know what? <laughs> oh no. They're not going to commit to it. No. Even if they did have the option, they're not going to commit to it. And it was really close, but Hamalai Vsport's not going to try to end the game just yet. I think this might top the list of tilters. They, they. No, I think game two is still worse. Okay. <laughs> well, the problem is, if they lose this game, they're out. And Kingen has no TP, and he spawns about the same time as Elder. So, it's going to be rough. Stopwatch is great here from life. He would have just died immediately otherwise. But here... I mean, we end up seeing a situation where Grizzly goes in in what seems so crazy. Oh, they got Baron too. And then yep. he flashes out, and life is like, that is my window. Yeah. And the thing is, Pace has a phenomenal flash there. Great read. He did also have the cleanse to help out. But Chobi had uh, Zonya's had flash, just gets caught, and the rest of the team crumbles as a result. Yeah, I mean, as much as we joke about it, when the Sejuani dashes into five of you, you're not immediately going to be like, oh, crap, like, I, I, I got to be ready to flash away, right? You're not going to expect the Rakan to come flying in after the Sejuani flashes out. Grizzly used the yeah. ultimate tool, Comic Relief, right? <laughs> and he was so confused it works. It that works. they were caught off oh, guard. And now, Kingen's back up because Gen G went for the Baron. Hun Life Esports got time to reform. And, you know, we talked about the last fight being the big one. That is going to be the case here. Yes, Gen.G have the advantage in gold and with the soul, but if Honor Life Esports get Elder, that's all that matters. Yeah. Might just come down to an Elder. Doran in position here. Next to Grizzly, we see Peanut now on the flank, this time not caught. <laughs> Zeka trying to do his best, trying to poke on in. Toby holds on to his crown, which again is going to be incredibly important. You see Gen.G is taking this very slowly. They win the poke wars with their ocean soul. Yep and their huge front line as well, right? So just pushing Grizzly away. The ult is thrown in, the third Q comes out and Grizzly's just dead. A nice try, but it doesn't look like it's gonna pay off for the Hummel Leaf Esports jungler. So Genji, nice pick off. What can you do here? Life doesn't have smite. I think you just have to force a fight as soon gotta as possible. Gotta send it. Gotta send it, gotta do something, gotta press your buttons. You're gonna lose to Elder Soul anyway, but they say, well, they almost zapped that away, but it's still Gen.T who is gonna pick up the objective, and now they have Exodia. And it feels like Grizzly's been targeted so hard this game. Once again, Doran finds an angle, and the thing is, what else can you do as a Sejuani? You have to try and approach the Dragon here, but just ends up splitting a bit too much from the team, and knowing he has no flash, Grizzly sees what's going to happen before it can, but he's in no position to counter it. Yeah. Gets caught out, and now Genji, you can't poke them. They have Ocean Soul. You can't clear the minions, they have Baron, and you certainly can't fight them with Elder. They are doing a good job of clearing the minions now that I say that. I mean, but Genji are in a weird... Through, yeah. yeah, they're in some kind of weird, like, 3-2. They've got Doran with Chovy, maybe just as a bodyguard, I guess, after what happened you know, before. I think of all the champions in the game, Cassante does look like a pretty good bodyguard. Yeah, no, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really good, could be a suitable career in the future. Yeah, he gets tired of being a yeah. broken league champion.
featuring in copy pastas everywhere, then yeah, it's yeah. If you get nerfed enough, you know, it's, it's time to move on. Um, yeah. So Genji, anyway, they still have this Baron, and uh, as I say that, it's gone. But they still do have the Elder. Which is what I meant to say. So the poke is coming in. And you see Zekka just going to get locked up against the wall. And the poke is just huge as Jovi's just going to take him out. And that must be the nail in the coffin. Now they're going to get the knock up here on a Viper as well. They're going to make this last fight at least clean. Unlike the other 50 fights we had in this game. As it is a clean ace to the side of Gen G. And it is a clean 3-0. Nothing to see here from Gen G as they take down the series. And will move into the winner's bracket up against T1 tomorrow. Pretty convincing victory overall. I think Gen G maintaining the form they had in the regular season. I think for Hunter Life Esports, the score does not tell the story of this series. So close to winning that game two. And there were moments in this game three as well. It's a frustrating one, but I think if they treat this as a learning experience, they still have chances in playoffs. They still have chances to go to Worlds. And ultimately, they showed some of that today. Grizzly, I think first First big challenge in playoffs, and definitely a struggle, but uh, hopefully can can learn from this. He's been growing throughout the season, but really, yeah, a bit of reflection on today will, will do a lot of good. But yeah, Genji making a statement today with KT losing in the upset. Genji showing that, no, the top two seeds aren't just going to fall apart. We're good. Yeah, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm glad you mentioned it because Hummel IP Sports now with this loss, it is double elimination, but they have to go against the other team that lost, which is KT. So if KT returned to form, uh, definitely expecting them to take the victory against Hummel IP Sports. But yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe T1 broke them. And I will say the regular season matches against Hummel IP Sports were both 2 1s in favor of KT. Whereas against Genji, they got 2 0 both times. So I'm not sure whether that necessarily means that they're going to show up better against <laughs> KT. <laughs> but I, I, I would hope that maybe they can handle the matchup a bit better. Either way, KT definitely reeling off after that loss. An opportunity. And regardless of what happens in the players for Honor Life Esports, they are locked into the regional gauntlet in the top half. So still definitely in line to make Worlds, even if they lose to KT. But I don't think they should focus on that now focus on recovering from this loss, looking at some of the issues that happened. And for Gen G, you know, once again, we get Gen G T1. It's just inevitable. It's just inevitable. At some rate, we always get it. As this was hilarious, the first Baron, the Rift Herald, getting involved as well, charging into the top turret as this fight is happening. Yeah, this game was- in the pit. I feel like the first two were super serious, and this one just had a lot of hijinks where it just <laughs> went, it was a bit wacky, yeah. but also very entertaining. Um, and no, it was a fun game. Yeah, it like really this, this moment for Grizzly, the ultimate bait, and it works! The genius, you know? okay? We, we couldn't think of how they could kill Chovy here. That's what it took, right? Think outside the box a little <laughs> bit. Yeah, I mean, if you're trying to go for like a straight up 5v5, the thing is, Toby will always be ready for that. <laughs> so just do that instead. No I guess. one was ready for Grizzly to dash over that wall. Yeah. Not even Hanwha Life Esports, but it worked. This was really close. Oh, like Hanwha Life Esports, the fact that Delight respawns and Doran wins the 1v1 and is able and you know, to, to recall. I actually think the fact that they had Zeri was such a big factor because Zeri can't auto over tanks. Yeah. So you can't rush the base down if you have these tanky ocean souls standing in front. True. And uh, Viper was very fed in this game. He, he he had a lot of damage and items. As they're saying, let's go to Daejeon. They want to go to Daejeon. In fact, it's Daejeon. That's their motto. Trying to deny um, Viper's return to his hometown as well. Yeah, and it might just happen. I mean, there's still an opportunity for Viper to get there, but they'll have to go through KT. And that is no easy feat. Yeah, definitely a challenge, and that is the big question. What form is KT in? Was it just a phenomenal uh, upswing from T1, or have KT started to crumble? The thing is, also, it was a close series between T1 and KT, so I don't think we yeah. can completely rule them out. But this series, despite being a 3-0, I felt was closer than the score implies, so definitely Honor Life Esports will go in as underdogs, but I think there's potential. And for the other side of the bracket against T1, I have no idea what... <laughs> <laughs> who even knows who's favorite who there? In yeah. theory, it sh 
On paper, it should be Gen G, but I, I don't even know anymore. We'll just have to wait <laughs> until tomorrow. That's right away. So it uh, will be very interesting. Make sure you guys are tuning into that. But we're done. It was a quick 3-0 tonight, and we'll leave it up to the space to try to break down that game three in the rest of the series. Take it away. Yeah, I like the, word, the use of word uh, try to break down the game here because in the early game it looked like that's going to be a wrap, that's going to be a Genji victory, even though the drafts could have let us on what life do something, but it got weird. It got really weird really fast. It got really weir weird really early, and also I felt like Hama Life Esports once again, shout outs to Dandy actually having a great day in uh, as far as drafting is concerned. I think once again setting them up for success, finding comfort for this team. As you can see in the draft, they've got the double melees and the Sejuani that was working for them so well in the regular season. And then Viper is on a hyper carry. What more could you want from this team? Yeah, I didn't really like the Cassante all that much in this draft, but the idea here is, okay, we're going to be up against double AD lanes. They have a Sejuani window. There's really no magic damage that can come through here. So we'll put this tank in the top lane. It's going to be very difficult to get through Doran's health bars here. And then they opted into the Kai'Sa, which I think is totally fine here. But unfortunately, you're running into great engage, strong lanes here for the first time, really having some comfort from the lanes for Hanwha. But ultimately, the early game and the jungle gap was what this came down to. And it was what we were most worried about coming into this series. And I think of the three games, this one was the most severe. I have one small question about the draft, though. Uh, what do we make of the Flex Maokai into Poppy jungle in the Yeah, so Poppy and Azir is something yeah. that have been used in tandem extraordinarily effectively. But I think getting Peanut off Maokai was a good thing for Hama Life Esports. He's been so incredibly dominant on that pick, even though it worked out uh, quite well for Genji towards the later stages of the game. There were certainly some moments where it could have been better um, used, used elsewhere. I, I don't mind it for Hama. No. I mean, we know Peanut and Poppy and how strong he is on the champion. And he, he was playing a different game here in the early game. We can roll <laughs> the first Eclipse to see what happened because it looked really doom on the setup of especially after this play. Yeah, I mean, Peanut coming in here early at level three and punishing Grizzly, this is exactly what they did actually in their regular season match in week nine is Peanut just said, I'm, I'm setting up counter jungling, I'm invading, I'm putting pressure on, Chovy comes over here and Zekka tries to save the play, is unsuccessful here, Peanut just kiting his way out, and Chovy gets a pretty nice lead from this, and they are able to snowball this peanut, man. He is just so good. <laughs> Kites this one out, Chovy layers a bunch of damage, and they just can't chase any further the, the dab here as well. And then things get even worse. You just mentioned it, Atlas, obviously the poppy synergy with the Azir, we know about this, but this is just Zekka getting caught, pushed here over the wall, and then Chovy's like, man, more money for me? I'm all about that. Yeah, and uh, this, it was just tilter after tilter after tilter. After the whole series for Hamalite Esports has been a tilter. Like all of these moments leading to these incredibly awkward outcomes, especially the first one where you've got Grizzly doing the right thing, going towards his support, who's roaming so perfectly at a like, weird timing, right? Where you don't expect there to be a Rakan that randomly it turns up. Sense. And yeah. it just doesn't, it doesn't matter at all because yeah. Peanut just wanders his way out and dabs at the end. But unlike, unlike game one, where when Hanwha Life started falling behind, they just could not and stopped fighting actually here, they kept the ball running because you still have a Viper on Zeri win condition. And we know that Zeri can find some Zeri moments uh, in the late game at any time. And yes, that is exactly the play that I'm talking about. So some Grizzly... mispositioning leading to a rotation of CC. Yeah, Gris, it is. he goes in uh, a little bit early and Jinji are like, wow, I'm not so sure about that one, Grizzly. And they kind of group up here and then Life makes a fantastic play. Viper layers the damage. They instantly delete Chovy, which it felt like was going to be an impossible task this game because Chovy has Crown, he has Zonias. He's so far ahead. He has so much money. He's really the main carry for this roster. If you can't kill him, you can never win a fight. They had that one opportunity. They pushed, unfortunately, right after this a little bit too far, though. Did get shut down uh, on the base. Baron went over, and then Genji still ultimately won the game. But I liked the snap decision there from Hanwha Life to collapse on the Jovi. Yeah, that decision was fantastic. But what you realize is that it's honestly, once again, a split call that loses the series uh, for Hanwha Life Esports in the end. If Kingen doesn't die underneath that turret, if they don't lose those straggler kills, trying to half go for a win and half um, back away, then maybe it could have been a different story because then you can set up for a fight around the Baron instead of 
just giving it over to Gen G to set up for their Exodia. I don't think I would be too worried though, because it's not like League fundamentals per se. It's not as what we saw in game one, where like, okay, they don't know how to play to their wins condition for the comp they pick. It's more like we need to be on the same page. We need to know when to make this decisive call. So going after KT in the next match, depending on how KT shows up, I would not be too confident, honestly. We'll see about this later. Last replay here, because of course, it had to come down to an Elder Flip. Not Flip so much though, because of what happened here. Yeah, Life doesn't have his unsealed smite this time, and he's zoned out by Peanut and Grizzly. I'm not entirely sure what the thought process here, but he, he gets completely zoned away by Doran, who just goes forward and says, well, if this Maokai dies, we win the fight. Peanut not under any threat on the top side for life. King in completely out of the fight now, and it's just desperation trying to get in here and steal this one away. It's never going to happen without Smite, and... I mean, Genji, we just wanted to showcase, like, they were more decisive here. They had the better setup because of that Baron they grabbed after the failed kill of the Nexus, and... Grizzly, he went, what, 0-6 and six this game. It's a bit of an issue. I think this is going to be a great learning experience for his career, but it's not one that Hanwha Life is going to be feeling great about with that matchup upcoming against KT, as you mentioned. Yeah, it didn't quite work out. Of course, like, it's so hard to play into both Keeper's Verdict and the Nature's Grasp around these objectives if uh, Gen.G can pick up a Baron, make sure that they have all of the control in the area. Like, it was desperation on Hanwha's side. And honestly, when Grizzly gets caught there, I think you just have to throw the Hail Mary and hope that something's going to work out because yeah. they managed, it was a one-man keeper's verdict. Maybe you can fight around that, but I, I honestly like think it was kind of doomed from uh, when they lost King and under the Nexus. That's not enough, uh, definitely. Uh, who should be the player of the game for this third one? Hmm. I don't even know who you guys voted for. We uh, voted for Chovy. Oh, yeah. uh, I, I, I feel like not Peanut, wrong. Yeah, Peanut had a great game, no doubt, but I think the, the game was so well set up for Chovy, and because he had the gold, he needed to actually have a fantastic game, and guess what he did? Uh, in this fight, he got, actually got chunked out and just over the wall. Does an insane amount of damage with the money he has. I love, actually, this is one of the big highlights he has, because this is the moment where you could see what he could do on his ear when his team is backing him up, goes over the wall here. The guy was just honestly incredible, a mechanical machine. If you give this much money over to him, he's going to do big things. Yep, swoops in and manages to lock down so many of these. That was the soul fight, absolutely pivotal. There were Ooh. so many moments in this game. Six out of 11, um, Peanut getting a whole bunch of them. I think Peanut can be credited for every single every game, game in yeah. this series. Um, he's been playing extraordinarily well. A little bit fast and loose, I think loses a few points in a few people's minds for that little catch towards the bottom side of the map. I was about to say, yeah, don't get too, don't get too cocky, don't get too excited uh, on this side of Peanut, even though he had a, a fantastic early game uh, in the end. We still have a bit of time before the interview, I believe. So I'm going to ask you guys to cosplay score and tell me what are the learnings from this series if you want to get more dominant and get ready for a really, really good T1 in the next game. I think definitely putting some focal points on Doran's team fighting, I think, especially uh, on the champions where he's not as tanky, like on the Rumble, definitely left a lot to be desired there. I think also being very wary that against teams that have stronger early game comps, you don't have to force, you do need to respect them, especially against the teams like KT and T1 they will punish you if you just opt in. Yeah, and I think um, th getting Doran on more of these more disengage style uh, matchups instead of maybe going for the Rumbles and the Aatroxes, I don't think he looked anywhere near the level of dominance that uh, Zaius displayed yesterday. I think Zaius's form at the moment is absolutely terrifying. So I think going back to the mitigation style that they had uh, when they took them down in the last finals is probably a great way to start. And then getting Maokai again sounds real good too. I don't think it's the dominant version of Genji that I was expecting today, especially when you think of T1 and how they played yesterday uh, against KT. But let's focus a bit on the lower part of the bracket, Hanwha Life facing against KT once again. They underperformed the beat yesterday. Uh, still favorite in this match, I believe, but how do you see this one going? I think the biggest problem is once again going to be the jungle, right? You, ha you had to deal with Peanut here, it was a big problem. Cuz showed us yesterday in Game 1 especially that he could take early leads and really put the pressure in. Um, on teams that aren't aware of it or when the junglers just aren't able to match. I think that Cuz will destroy Grizzly again. And I think aiming a little bit, looking a little bit exposed, I think with his champion pool, maybe Viper is the angle, but I'm still gonna think that I'm predicting KT for this one.
I'm probably going to predict KT as well, but I think that Draft was definitely pretty good on the Harmer Life yeah. Esports side. And if they can avoid having games stolen away from them, like in game number two, and being on the same page for these late game decisions, then I see an avenue uh, for them to pick up a victory. But I think that we do have to kind of go down the tier list a little bit uh, because KT deserve a lot of respect after their extraordinary regular season. Definitely. We'll see if they can uh, come back after the defeat they suffered from yesterday. But that's the story for another day. Time for us to jump to the interview. Take it away, Chisan. Thank you very much, guys. This is Jason for the winner interview translation. We are here joined by the Gen Z players after their win up against HANA Life Esports. Please welcome Doran Pina Chovi, Pays the Light. Congratulations, guys. Thank you very much. Doran, a clean 2-0. You guys are now making your way into the upper bracket. How do you feel? Considering the upcoming schedules, I really wanted to get a clean win today. And this 3-0 win um, makes me really happy. And I was able to watch the recent release of Genji's documentary. And Doran, you were the one always staying late at the team house, the last one to leave the practice room. How hard did you work for this playoffs? <laughs> It was fake, you know, it was edited so well for me, you know, because not only me, but also the entire Genji players were working really hard until the very late night. You were able to show off your Aatrox up against the skin owner of Aatrox, and you were the unanimous POG on that Aatrox in game number one. You went for a blind pick Aatrox, do so you think that Aatrox is OP right now and has no counter pick? It doesn't really mean mean that he has no counter, you know, there are some strategies to shut down Aatrox, but I think, yeah, Aatrox right now is a very decent pick. A good blind pickable champion. Now tomorrow, or the, in the upcoming upper bracket, you're going to be facing up against Zeus on the side of T1. Just like I did in the regular season, I'm pretty sure we're going to win a, one more time tomorrow. <laughs> Just like the summer regular season. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing the top lane matchup between Doran and Zeus as well, happening tomorrow. Now, Peanut, you were the 11 out of 11 POG in game two. How do you feel about the win today? Well, game two and three was a little bit, you know, shaky, to be completely honest, but winning in the end is what matters the most, and having this clean and perfect 3-0 score uh, means a lot. Exactly like you said, game two was not easy, but Peanut, your still was the game ender. And Peanut, every time, it all comes, ta comes down to your still when Genji is in danger. Were you expecting that, come that kind of a big turnaround? Well, I didn't really think that that team fight will end the game, but I knew it's going to be our last chance to make it back into that game. And Peanut, you said to Ruler that you are getting carried every time. And Ruler was unhappy about your comment. Did you get to check that out? Do you have no clue? I mean, I did read it from your cue card just now, but I don't think we can actually say that on broadcast, but I'm not really sure whether I, if I actually said he is getting carried every time, you know, because he's always good. So I guess like, it was some sort of a miscommunication, but, you know, seeing him winning another title, you know, it feels, I mean, I, I'm just so jealous that he has it all every time. Then is there anything you want to say to Ruler? Ruler, I envy you. You got everything, you know. You're too perfect. And Peanut, in the previous interview, you already mentioned T1 is the team that you guys are watching out for the most, and that matchup is happening very soon. What are you going to focus on the most tomorrow in the upper bracket? So we have a bit of a long history in the league scene and T1, they are always stronger in playoffs, so I was expecting them to win actually. 
And I think it's going to be a great series. I'm looking forward to the matchup against T1 a lot. Now, Chovy, how do you feel making it into the upper bracket? So we are, you know, advancing to the upper bracket, but our goal is winning the LCK, so I'm not too overwhelmed by this win today. So KT decided to go up against T1, so you guys got to play up against Hana Life. Did you get to watch yesterday's series? Yes, of course, I did watch. Watch it. It was a five gamer, so it was a lot of fun. So, what was your first thought about the matchup that was decided by KT? Not nothing too much, you know. I didn't really pay a lot of attention to how the matchup turned out. We just wanted to analyze both of the potential opponents in order to analyze them. And today, Zeka, he was able to have his hands on his signature champion, Yone. I guess Genji was fully ready to go into his pick, right? I have a lot of experience playing Azir into Yone and also Yone into Azir, so being that Azir end was not a big deal, you know? I knew that it's going to be a doable laning matchup, so we were not afraid to let it through the draft. So Chovy, you said you watched the T1 KT series yesterday. Now you are going up against T1 tomorrow. What is your mindset for that series? I hope we can beat them in order to make it all the way to the finals in advance. Now, Paze, you were going up against Viper, you know, one of the world champions. What did you focus on in terms of the laning phase? So we always... Um, we were able to always pick in the very last phase of the pick and ban, so our drafting was pretty on point. And Paze, you were also able to, you know, pop off together with your teammates, but today it was the top side players getting all the POGs today. So as the younger, youngest player on the side of GNG, how did you feel about your, you know, older brothers performing today? They were doing a great job, so I was pretty sure as long as I do my work right, we were going to win, and I think I have to step it up a little bit. Now it's going to be Gumai Yushi Keria, your lane opponent tomorrow. How are you going to prepare for that matchup? They are both a very talented player, so I guess we really have to outplay them. And Delight, a clean to zero, how do you feel? Personally, my performance was not on point, but as a team, we did a great job. So, yeah, I'm happy with the outcome. Well, Game 3, Life's Recon was a little bit, you know, doing a lot of jobs. So, were you a little bit scared that the game might end because of the outplay from Recon? So, there was a little bit of a risky moment where we almost lost our Nexus, but we were able to come back and get the win. Then, who do you think deserve the series MVP today. The oldest member, the captain, ah, Peanut for sure. So tomorrow, Genji and T1 will fight for the ticket to the finals. Any message for all the Genji players? <laughs> Fighting, coming from the light with a lot, a lot of energy. And lastly, Peanut. We have so many fans here in the audience, especially there was a fan from Brazil as well. Any message for them? Thank you so much for coming to Low Park to support Gen G. And today, you know, we were playing a very important match in you know, one of the playoff series, so I'm looking forward to another support, uh, another more support from our fans and the who survives longer is the stronger one so I will make sure to survive longer in the playoffs run and this will be the end of the interview from the Genji players and back to the space thank you thank you Jason wonderful translation as always and I want to follow up on uh, what the host was asking here who is the player of the series today I think it's an up oh it's an up it's yeah delight's pretty based he just knows yep it's peanut yeah. I think he just absolutely destroyed his opposition, played a great series, empowered his laners like he always does. And uh, I mean, Peanut was our first all pro vote for jungle for a reason. We thought he was absolutely stronger than Cuz overall, made a huge impact. But 
We'll see what he does uh, tomorrow against Owner. I think that is definitely going to be a huge uh, sticking point, potentially, that T1's going to have to deal with. Yeah, I actually think that tomorrow's series is really interesting because there are very clear win conditions for both teams. I think top lane for T1 is looking well and truly uh, in their favor. Bottom lane, also I think that Delight and Pays had a pretty subdued day today. But the mid-jungle of Gen.G is looking ridiculously strong, yeah. and we've seen mid-jungle be the deciding factor in so many of our more recent games. Yeah, mid-jungle versus top-jungle. It's going to be interesting as the match results. The expected one, the 3-0 on the set of Gen.G. Any 3-0 predictors? Yeah, yeah right here. Clean 3-0, yeah, yeah. nothing to see here. The remnants of score staying strong here from his times on KT. Who was wrong? Look at it. All Please, of us right here. Week, man. That's the first good predictions I have this week. So. <laughs> there we go. Uh, it's my it's my second. Yeah. Um, I, I'm pre wait. Is it? Did you did you not predict DRX to be three zeroed? I don't think so. Oh. I say I think I said three two. Ooh. Whoa! Oh, a barrel that's, believer, yeah, a true I barrel believer. Hope, right? That is, that is, that I is a like, barrel believer. If he's the one true goat, then maybe he can. No, no, no. Oh no! Well, like, so he was always going to run it in playoffs. He needs yeah. to win yeah. the qualifier. That's how that one goes. And um, forward, not talking about that yet, though. Um, tomorrow we'll have Gen GT One, I believe, and followed up by KT. Hanwha Life Esports on Sunday. Any first expectations coming to both of these matchups, actually, maybe? I think the first series is going to be a long one. I think T1 oh, yeah. is going to have to play two grueling back-to-back -back best of fives that could both go to five. I don't think that either of these teams will have a one-sided series. It just doesn't look like Gen.G is at their peak form. T1 rising up quite significantly. I, I think we're in for another Silver Scrapes tomorrow. That's that's my guess. Yeah, I think that uh, T1, they took a note out of DRX at Worlds' book, and they're like, we need to go five games every single game, and that way we can guarantee a victory in the final best of five. Get all of that experience, make sure they follow the rule set. Uh, we'll see whether they do do that. Hamalai versus uh, KT should be KT favored, but I also think that that may have some surprises for us. I don't know what to expect from this one. I don't know what kind of KT we're going to see, but that's the story for Sunday. Tomorrow, as we said, Genji versus T1. I'm hyped that we get this matchup so early in playoffs. Yeah. And we can also get a rematch later, so. Uh, I guess the last thing to say is, of course, remember everyone, it's two hours earlier than Thank today, you. so 3 p.m. KST, yeah. so don't show up late. You don't want to miss it. Nice. Yeah, exactly right. Make sure that you're here on time for another banger. Uh, we get a rematch of the final, and we could also get the rematch of the spring final in the summer final after getting it in, like, tomorrow's match as well. Insane. We have insane playoffs so far, honestly. Uh, I absolutely love them, and I hope you guys do too at home. Thank you so much for watching the LCK once again. We'll be back tomorrow for more League of Legends. Bye-bye.